I was walking with my cousins about 14 years ago when we found what looked like an old burnt out house. So naturally being kids at the time and having no sense of self-preservation, we decided to explore it. It was mostly full of charred wooden crap and junk, but then one of my cousins found an entrance to a cellar outside. We busted the old rusty lock off the door and looked down inside. It was dark down there and we didn't really have any reason to go parking around it. Plus, we started to get creeped out, so we kicked some dirt down into it and walked off. We get about 15 yards away from the house and one cousin says he hears a noise and everyone goes dead silent. And yep, there were some noises like somebody was coming up from the rotting cellar stairs of the house. We peek back through the trees and see a kind of dark fuzzy shape crawl out of the cellar which we left open. It really looks like a dog. It then stood up for it and we hauled out of there. We run off as fast as we possibly can, convinced that that thing was going to chase us. I've honestly never ran so quick in my life and actually shredded my arms and legs on the journey back, when in reality we were fine. But the closest thing I can imagine it was is some kind of small bear that lived in the cellar. Maybe it had another entrance that we didn't know about and I guess we just disturbed it to come and get us. That's if it was a bear. So when I was in grade 3, my parents were going out for a drive with me. I believe we're going to visit my grandparents and I would stay there for the weekend. We're in the middle of nowhere, out in farmlands of southern Ohio, and we're kind of hungry and thirsty so we look for the gas station for snacks and drinks. Finally we found a gas station. I was first to go out and I start running towards it. It's surrounded by trees and looks kind of menacing. The gas station was dark outside and I looked into the front door. It was abandoned but there was a back door so we thought maybe there was a guy from the station in there. We went around the back and there was an axe dug deep into the door. We left right then and there when our car was pulling away. I then noticed somebody walking out from some bushes, grabbing the axe and trying to pull it out from the door. I screamed to my dad. He saw it in the rear view mirror and sped out of there. Today we've tried hard to find any information about the gas station but unfortunately we haven't found much, especially because of how long ago it was when it happened. So, I was walking a section of the Appalachian Trail with a couple of buddies when we happened across a bundle of sticks. The sticks were arranged to look like a person. It was obviously placed by somebody, as it was in the dead center of the trail, leaning against a rock. I thought it was cool, so grabbed it and put it in my backpack. Anyway, we finished the hike and set up for the night in our camping spot. We were all pretty wiped out from the long day, so after dinner, we retired to our prospective tents and cocked in for the night. The next morning, I was the first one awake, so I got up to the coffee, and what did I find? An identical bundle of sticks to the ones that we'd found, sitting atop the pile of charred wood from the previous night's fire. The first thing I did was check my pack, and sure enough, the one I'd picked up was still there. Each of my friends swore they didn't put it there. It was obviously the same. It was weird because we're all adamant about not putting it in there, but I can never be sure it wasn't one of them messing with us. The thing that messes with me is the bundle I found in the morning was almost an exact replica of the one we found on the trail earlier, and I find it hard to believe that one of the guys could have made such a close replica without having serious skill. And it's not like either of us would have placed them one on top of the other on the trail beforehand for us to stumble upon because we're way out in the middle of nowhere. So, I was hiking a section of the North Umpaca Trail, northern part of southern Oregon, a few years back with my sister-in-law. It's about a 72 mile trail broken into sections that can be easy to hike to in one day. At this time, I lived about midway up the trail, fairly remote in a small community. It was mid-fall, and 
we decided to set out. The trail was running along the south side of the N. Yumpeka River and was pretty up and down in the beginning. We made it to a fairly flat section that was running just above the river. There was this beautiful view of the river through the trees so we stopped to get some pictures and take a water break. I immediately felt extremely uncomfortable like we're being watched. I slowly turned my head back to look behind us and across the trail up a small incline through the trees I could see a small meadow. Across the meadow maybe 15 yards around away from us was a tent. An old canvas style tent. As I'm looking I notice bones strung from the trees to the meadow like creepy deaf wind chimes or something. My stomach clenched and I dropped. I leaned in and my sister-in-law whispered do not turn around to look behind us, just continue walking and I'll tell you when we run. We were close enough to the river that nobody could get right next to us or could have heard this. She did exactly as I told her. Setting off at the brisk walking pace we'd been at before, we got maybe 10 yards and I could hear footsteps through the forest floor coming behind us and slightly above us. That part of the forest is very dense. This is a thick moss covered area under the trees so footsteps make a very specific sound. I leaned forward and told her to pick up the speed. She did. So did I and so did whoever was behind us. I leaned forward again and told her to run as fast as she could and not stop until I told her to. For two middle aged women, both slightly overweight, we ran like the damn wind. <laughs> I just kept telling her go go go. I could see ahead of us that the trail made an incline and basically reared around a cliff. I knew at this point that whoever it was was going to have to come down onto the trail or stop. We kept running. We probably ran at least a mile after that even though we could no longer hear anyone behind us or above us. That section of the trail was about 9 miles and we were not halfway through when this happened. We eventually slowed down. Bart just hurried as fast as we could the rest of the way. We had arranged for her younger brother to pick us up. Now we made it to the next trailhead fairly early so we made our way out to the 138 and started walking east towards home, knowing he'd find us. He did and was shocked at the story. We got home and immediately called our local sheriff who lived just above us at the ranger station. He came to the house and heard our story. He explained that it might be a day or two before they could get in on the trail as they had a missing hunter at the time they were searching for too. So a few days go by and he shows up at the house and told me that we were not crazy or imagining things as someone really did chase us. I said what did he found and he looked down to the ground and looked up and said I'm not going to tell you what we found or how we found it because you'd never go hiking again. What we found was not normal and would not happen up here again. He then basically instructed me to never hike unarmed again. I never found out who they were or why they are out there for us and I also never hiked that section of the trail again and apparently it completely burnt last year. I also never hiked unarmed ever again. This was a huge for me as I'm not really a gun person, I had many incidents while I was actually living up in a national forest with wild animals and other stranger things but nothing that scared me like this. So we lived in the woods during quarantine, we'd spend the days there, storm or shine, drinking beers and picking up trash swimming and just goofing around. We also started doing something that sounds odd to say aloud but at the time kept us sane. We'd get in the woods, strip our socks and shoes off and hike since we wanted to get out to this little lagoon we'd find and lay out there. It was insanely meditative. I also absolutely loved barefoot wandering. It feels very nice and primal in some kind of way. Anyway, there we roamed like that. The more in tune we got with the woods around us, the better we'd feel. Without the chatter between us and the careless stomping of boots, we'd become a part of the woods in a weird way. Now, we'd surprise people pretty often without meaning to, 
past him within a couple of feet before they noticed us. It was like our guts started calling the shots. We could feel storms brewing. All the creatures seemed to stop minding us and we walked like that. So whenever the woods went silent, we knew something was coming. It was one of those days with the thick skies and kind of electric air. It had been stormy out for a few days and the woods were pretty empty. We'd only seen maybe two other souls all day. Darkness had started to creep in, quicker than usual. We were heading out of the woods a bit, barefoot and knocking back the dregs of the warm beer, just chatting but not really saying much. I remembered we were coming up to this hill and all of a sudden, it was like I'd swollen a snowball. I looked up at her and she was frozen mid-laugh. Something was wrong. The woods were off. We were surrounded by murky shadows and dead silence. Heavy silence and tense silence. Then we heard it. It was a metallic sort of sound. A kind of clanging that we can't really make out exactly what is. A metal striking stone maybe? Over and over. A bit further down the trail. Squarely in between us and way out. We stood there like statues, tucked behind some trees, just listening, a shovel and some digging. We crept closer. I remembered how the sound made my palms itch. My friend's face was flushed red. I told myself it was being stupid. In fact, I had in my backpack a little spade that we used to plant flowers and dig up rocks and such. Who was I to judge this person, but then again, that was just a little garden spade. And as we got closer, it became clear that this person had a full one shovel and was digging in the middle of the trowel. I kept trying to explain it to myself. This person was just digging. It was dusk and a lightning storm was hastening our way. But we all cope with quarantine differently. And sure, it was odd to carry a big shovel out there, but maybe they're burying a pet or something. And sure. It makes no sense that they'd bury their pet in the middle of the trowel, but maybe they're digging off a bike. And yeah, they don't have a bike, but like that on and on in my mind, churning out possibilities but not really getting anywhere, and my gut was really in a knot now. We were almost on him now. I think it was a him. Though they're wearing a hat, scarf and whatnot, all covered in black, which is crazy for the summer. Maybe he loved that spot and that's just how he went there. My stomach hurt more with every step now. We were both shining in sweat and the sound of metal striking the earth and stone seemed to be deafening. It's really a primal sort of fear, isn't it? Rooted deep in our guts and completely deaf to every excuse I was handing it. We were just wandering along one minute cracking jokes, drinking beer and suddenly Every neuron was firing, and every muscle goes tight enough to snap. My mind is racing. I was taking stock of everything. Two girls, barefoot in swimsuits and overalls, two empty cans of beer, and I had a big bag of trash, and my backpack full of stuff. My friend was holding our bucket of rocks, though we'd pick skinny flat stones. Not really for defense, but water skipping. I had a can of pepper spray buried somewhere in my bag, but to my dismay, I couldn't access it easily. It feels so insane looking back. I've never been in a fight, and I've never really raised my voice much. I'd spent most of my days talking to toddlers about emotional regulation, and yet here I am, suddenly getting ready for god knows what, tallying up what I could use as a weapon against a stranger. But all of the excuses I made for this person had suddenly faded away. Maybe my gut was wrong. Maybe he's doing one of a million things. Maybe he'd feel awkward and embarrassed and see us and bolt away. But what if it's right? What is the cost if I'm correct? If we walk past and he swings a shovel, then what? What would the excuse cost us? Something shifted and I don't know what. It felt like a high voltage situation. A single spark in a gas choked room. My friend went white, said the first word we had exchanged to each other. Don't look at him and run. We ran, crashed into the woods off the trail, close to the water. We could jump in if he chased us. 
We sprint in, literally leaping over boulders, ducking under trees, fawns and stones, and sticking into bare soles. I didn't feel them. Didn't even notice the blood on my feet until we broke out of the tree line. Later on, we tried to piece it together, tried to understand what had happened. We were completely confused and perplexed, and definitely felt a strange sense of invincibility while sneaking around the woods. It wasn't until we're home, bandaging our feet, that we felt that we'd got out of it. Now, God knows what would have happened if we didn't make it out of that situation the way that we did. God knows what would have happened if he had stopped shoveling and started walking towards us or chased us. This wasn't really deep woods camping, because my friend and I were staying at a designated camp area in a state park, but it's still a scary story. So in the middle of the night, I want to say around 1am, I'm woken up to the sound of gunshots. Two of the other friends in my tent were also awake. It sounded like the gunshots were getting closer and closer over the course of half an hour. It went from that sounds far away to that sounds like a bullet about to hit the camp. Like I said, this is a state park where hunting is illegal, which either meant some reckless hunter was ignoring the laws and hunting after midnight, or some deranged lunatic is just walking around taking shots randomly into the woods. So, friends and I stay low to the ground, afraid that a stray bullet will come into our tent. Eventually, we begin to see spotlights crossing over the roof of our tent as state troopers in a helicopter begin searching the area for the suspect. An hour after we heard the gunshots, we also heard some police sirens around the main road above us. So the campsite was located at the bottom of a valley. There were sounds of drop the weapon. I said drop the weapon. A few more sounds of gunshots and some dudes frantically scrambling and following instructions then eventually silence. The next morning, we went to ask the campsite managers if they knew what happened last night. It turns out, there was a guy who lived in a house higher up the side of the mountain above the main road. He did some meth that night and decided it would be fun to fire his gun at any cars that passed by. The state troopers arrived and arrested him. There's also bullets in some of the trees around camp and in one of the RVs that was parked up. I'm just really relieved that no one was hurt or killed by the gunman, especially after seeing how close the bullets come to some of the campers' tents. It could have easily hit us. Now, I distant hike when I can. Sometimes that means getting up early or staying out late to get as many miles in as possible. Sometimes walking in the pitch dark with a low light headlamp gets really spooky. I grew up in the woods of this area. I slept under a canopy of stars more nights than I can count. I've literally trekked thousands of miles of trail, riverbank, lakeshore, ridge, bottoms, bogs and creeks. I've hunted the game. I'm establishing this because it's important for you to understand that I've seen and heard and smelt just about everything the region has to offer in terms of the wilderness. The scariest experience though happened around 4.30 in the morning. It was in late spring, and the first morning light wouldn't really be visible in the treetops for at least another 45 minutes or so. Now. I'm at the bottom that's wedged between two steep ridges. The trail I'm on was muddy, narrow, and completely helmed in thick underbrush, young maple, and old oak growth. I'm focused on the small light from my headlamp. Just one step after another and I zone out, then I hear a loud crack and I freeze. This is a part I had trouble describing, 4.30 in springtime means I'm the only thing making noise, no birds at this hour, dead quiet. Mid-step I froze. When fight or flight kicks in, you have these immediate instinct falls. The thought that instantly flashed in my mind as I stood there balancing myself is, if I hear that again, I'm turning around and I'm going back in a hurry. 
Why? Because that sound was not a branch breaking, it wasn't Deadfall, it wasn't a Widowmaker. I'm pretty sure I just heard something intentional. Hearing it twice, well, that meant get out of there. To describe it as best I can, it sounded like a decent sized wooden stick being violently whacked against a tree. More a fungo bat sized stick than a baseball bat. The distinction in my head being that this sound was a crack, not a fud or sump. It's kind of like an explosive sound, but almost like it wasn't. It was terribly loud. I had the sense that it was about 50 yards in front of me and clear. Now, as I stood there completely shocked, I realised this seemed to be the worst part of my situation. I knew where the sound came from, and I knew where the trail went. In about 30 yards, I was going to come up to a 180 degree turn, and start up the ridge going away from the creek. This meant, as soon as I got the courage to move towards this noise, I was going to have to turn back to it and get up that ridge. This made me very nervous. Now, I was really worried about maybe finding a murderer or Bigfoot or god knows what. Now minutes pass. I just breathe my foggy breath into my glasses and listen. Nothing. Dead quiet. I get about 20 or 30 minutes until first light. I crank up the headlight and start to slowly creep to my 180 turn. When you wear a headlamp in the woods at night, every tree branch can make a really large shadow in front of you, and it makes moving on a trail very difficult. So I get to the turn and also quickly make the bend. I'm moving pretty fast at this point, trying to be quiet, taking tiny shallow breaths so I can listen to whatever's up ahead of me. And then I smelt it. It's a smell that I can't describe. I just imagine wet rotten death. I've actually worked scenes where human remains have been found in the past as a firefighter. This was like days old decomposition and it just smelled strange. I'm walking fast but by the time I made it to the top of the ridge I was huffing and the first light was showing. I didn't stop moving until full light was out and the birds were chirping. I've heard it all in our woods. I've smelt it all, I'm telling you, but I don't know what the hell that was. Deadfall. And especially, branches do make sounds, but nothing like this. My family used to go camping with a few groups of friends when I was a kid. I remembered one Christmas when I was five. We were camping out in the bush. There were nine of us in total at our campsite. We were allowed to wander through the bush. The parents would give us a walkie-talkie and tell us when to come back to camp. We never went far away. Anyway, out of nowhere, an unfamiliar voice came over. It's a man's voice. He said he was Santa and he was trying to find us to give us our presents and ask us to look for him. We all ran back to our campsite excited to say about Santa speaking to us. Then the walkie talkie was taken off of us and we weren't allowed to go out anywhere. We were all pretty devastated at the time, but now, as an adult, I understand the pure creepiness of it. I still don't know who was talking to us to this day. Now I'm not exactly what you guys on here would call a park ranger, but it's basically the equivalent in the country that I live. I have a couple of stories for you today. Now the first is actually from my childhood, one from when I was younger than I am now. My father really liked to go out on adventures with myself and my brother, and he always planned really cool stuff for us to do. One of these trips involved us going out into the woods and going out camping together. Now this was really interesting for us and we'd never been out in the snow before like this, so of course it would bring new challenges, but it would also bring some new adventure. My other brother at the time didn't bother accompanying us, so it's just me and my dad, but I didn't mind it that way. Sometimes I find that my brother can be a bit self-indulged and only really listen or talk about himself and not really give you good advice back. 
It's quite annoying because I always seem to give him the best advice that I possibly could, but that didn't matter, at least not on this trip. Now we basically plan to go out into the woods for a good couple of days camping and hiking along the way, and this was brilliant for me as I love to go outdoors. Now we drove up to the area that we needed and we set out. We were following the main path and had a designated site that we were going to go camping in. My dad did this for safety reasons as of course his son was with him and he didn't want to be too far away from everyone. When we set out, the snow was no longer falling but there was a lot of snow around and snow on the trees so that just meant you had to be a little bit careful when you were walking because it wasn't always clear whether the ground was kind of like a dry snow or a wet snow and if it's sort of soggy you can easily get your shoes wet and you have to pretty much head back if that happens. So being relatively careful we set out. At first we're walking through some relatively low bushes and quite big trees, they're kind of like the tall skinny kind if you know what I mean. They're basically really beautiful and I'm really having a good time on the first part of my adventure with my dad. I absolutely love to go on trips like this with my father. He's really one of my best friends so I was having a great time. The trees eventually become more dense and some of the snow is falling off of the trees and hitting us on the head and it's a little bit annoying because you have to keep brushing your hat just to try and keep dry. But it's fine and again adds to some of the adventure. Now we hike for quite a while and eventually make it out to the spot that we're going to camp in. The snow is actually picked up a little bit and my dad sets to work and he made me help with the tent, not only to learn the importance of it but also because it's important for staying warm. Now one thing I was really looking forward to and my dad especially was the night sky. We were going to see some beautiful stars out here because we're far away from most populations and miles away from worrying about light pollution. It's something I hadn't really experienced before living in a populated city, so this was a treat. We eventually get up the tent and go inside for a while, and my dad then starts a fire. It doesn't take him too long because he has all the appropriate equipment with him but he's very cautious to make sure the fire is going nice and strong. He has plenty of firewood around so this is really good and I know it's going to be more than enough to keep us warm. The fire eventually melts some of the snow around where we are and it makes it very warm so I'm really grateful for this. We sit there talking about different stories and my dad said hey look up at the stars you never know if you're going to see a shooting star. And unfortunately I didn't see any that night, but that's no worries whatsoever. I'm just really glad to be out here and have some bonding time with my father. So the first night goes as planned and everything's good, and we actually have a small heater in the tent so we're really warm and toasty. We wake up the next day and everything's as normal. We set out where we're going to hike a little bit further for the day and see some of the views that are around. And this place is really beautiful. The hills kind of look a bit mountainy, and again, it's something that's a relatively new experience for me, so I'm really excited to see it all. So, we set out further and further and get to a point where my dad says that we need to head back just in case we get lost and I completely understood. Now, while we're there, my dad can hear what sounds like a wolf hailing. It seems to be a lone one, but it really frightens my dad. Seeing my father scared actually scares me a lot too. He said, son, we better head back. He didn't have to explain to me why it was, and I was pretty glad to be heading back now. I didn't actually hear too much, to be honest, at the time of the wolves. It was more my dad picked up on it, and I guess I kind of know this, but not really. But it was pretty creepy, so... We continue our hike and eventually make it back to the camp and my dad once again gets a fire going. We cook some food over the fire and again we're just having a really good time basically and we decide that we're going to head in for the night. Now throughout the night we can definitely hear some kind of animal howling. Now I know this might sound weird but I really don't know what animal this was. 
I realised too, my dad seemed relatively unsure of exactly what this was and again it kind of worried me. I was very worried about wolves coming to get me even though that realistically it's quite unlikely that it would ever happen. Especially not with the way that we're armed, but I don't know. It's just something kind of creepy that you don't really experience often in life unless you're in those kind of situations where you're in the middle of nowhere like that. So anyway, we ended up falling asleep after not too long and waking up again in the night to realise that the fire's been put out. That's really odd, my dad says. Did you leave any water around? I say no, of course not. And my dad looks a little bit worried and confused. We definitely had the fire going and more than enough wood in it, but it seems to have gone out almost. It looks like somebody's done it on purpose, but we're pretty sure this is some kind of accident and maybe I left water next to it that got knocked over. Not to worry. We head out again for another day of adventuring. Now on this particular day, we did some more hiking and sightseeing, and we actually tried to do some ice fishing, which I can tell you was pretty unsuccessful. So, we start heading back to the tent on the way home. As we get back to the tent, it's pretty much the same thing again. We basically put everything away and get the fire going, cook some food, then set a whim for the night. Now, I'm awoken at some point in the night, confused as to why I can see my dad outside. I can just about see the silhouette that's portraying a shadow onto the tent. I don't think much of it and fall asleep again, thinking maybe my dad's just went out to use the toilet or maybe he's worried about the fire. The following morning, I woke up and I said to my dad, Dad, what were you doing last night? He says, what do you mean? I wasn't doing anything. I say, yeah, what were you doing to the fire outside? And now suddenly my dad looks really concerned. He looks at me and says, no son, I've been here the whole time. What happened? And I explain what happened and he seems somewhat worried. He says, son, it was probably just something in your imagination, so try not to worry about it too much, but worry me it did. I don't really see my dad too scared often, but there was definitely something off. I had certainly seen somebody the previous night. I don't know, maybe it's just where I wasn't used to being out there and I was a little bit uncomfortable and I was just imagining things. But this was pretty creepy to say the very least. So anyway, we set out once again and everything's as normal like usual. As we set out, we've basically come into one of our last days and we're just having a normal conversation as usual. While we're there, we stop and we can see somebody up on the bridge line just further away from where we are. It's quite hard to see but they seem to have a really large brownie colour coat on which is really odd. We wave and say hello but there's no reply. My dad seems to get a little bit concerned at this and tells me that we need to head back now. So a little bit bored now, we're just sitting there with the fire going, making food not really saying anything and my dad seems more worried than before. He says he's going to investigate something and not to worry and I say okay and wait for my dad to return 4 or 5 minutes later which he does. I say dad what happened and he says nothing just get ready for sleep. My dad gets the fire going even stronger and we settle in for the night. We fall asleep and wake up the next morning to realise that the fires went out once again. Definitely by water which is really bizarre. It can't have possibly been from the snow or the trees because there wasn't much around there, especially not in the spot that we're in, but how did it go out? This is really bizarre. Now we get our things together and head out for the final day's adventure. We once again go to do some lake fishing and really want to try and get some fish this time because it's something I haven't really experienced many other times and I've never caught anything fishing and my dad loves fishing so he keeps on and on going on about it but I tell him how boring it can be but he will not listen. His father also did fishing too so that's definitely why he liked it so much. So we surprisingly actually catch one single tiny fish. And I joke to my dad about it, but he's eager for us to get it back to our campsite and put it on the fire. And that's exactly what we do. 
So we make it all the way back again, and we start the fire, and everything's as normal. We eat the fish, then we decide that we should just start heading home the next morning earlier than usual because we're both a bit bored now, which is completely fine. As we're sitting there, just roasting some food over the fire, we can see a strange figure once again, just off in the distance. It's a silhouette of a person wearing some kind of coat which kind of looks like a very dark colour against the background, but this is basically just because of how dark it is now. Now the stars look absolutely beautiful at this point, but they're not really casting enough light down on us for us to be able to see well. But it's definitely a person there. I joked to my dad saying it's probably a snowman, but my dad doesn't really seem to be in the mood for jokes. He then says hey, and shouts out hey again and waves, but there's no reply. That's when my dad says that he's going to investigate a little bit and I trowel slowly behind him. We can see whatever this figure is holding up some kind of stick to the sky. Now what's really weird in this moment is we both realise the clothes that this person's wearing. The clothes do not look like somebody that's from the 21st century. They look very primitive and all of his clothes are from some kind of animal hides. And how he wasn't cold, I'll never know, because we were cold enough with our new high-tech gear on, but this was really weird. It looked like somebody coming from a fancy dress or costume shop, if you guys call it that. But why would he be out here like this? Again, we called out, but we don't get any reply whatsoever, and we probably get about 40 or so feet from him, and we can see that this is a much older man just staring at us, still holding up some kind of stick into the air. That's when my dad turns around and says, son, you know what to do. And I did. I didn't need any further instructions as we start trudging back through the snow again. My dad's holding my hand, and he won't take his eyes off of this person. He says, son, do not take your eyes off of him. If he moves one inch, tell me and I start to panic a little bit and start putting everything away. I eventually do so, and that figure is still there, having only moved very slightly. We get everything together and I tell my dad, and he says it's time to go. My dad doesn't even bother putting out the fire, and we start the slow trek back with only our torches to guide us. Luckily there's enough light on the ground from the snow illuminated for us to be able to see where we're going, and we start the trek back. While walking, I keep looking over periodically, and that guy is still there, barely moving, until eventually, he turns away into the woods. This makes us pick up our pace a little bit because we can't really see what direction he's going in. And I kid you not, we can hear the sounds of wolves once again. My dad still has his lights on because he thinks it's probably going to scare the wolves a bit and he has his weapon ready. Luckily we make it back to the car and everything's uneventful at this point. We quickly get into the car, wait for a good 5 or 10 minutes which has got to be the most terrifying part while he's able to get the engine going and the car ready to drive. During these moments, my dad tells me, please tell me if you see anything, son, and I promise him, and we have the doors locked. My dad still has his weapon in hand at this point, and thank god the car comes to life. My dad slowly turns it round and gets the car onto the road, and we start making the way back home. I say, dad, dad, what did you see? And my dad tells me, whatever he saw was definitely not a person. He then reveals to me that when he went off earlier in the day and before he had seen the exact same figure that looked terribly dated and out of place for the situation they are in. He said it almost looks like he's bumped into some kind of time traveller or we've bumped into them. We are both very scared by this experience and my dad made me promise that I wouldn't say anything to my mum because he knew that she would never let us out there again. Now, we never did go back to there ever again afterwards. Looking back on it now and speaking to him more recently, he's revealed to me how scared he was at the time. 
and that he didn't want to show me how scared he was at the time, but he was really feeling it. Now, I'm certain we bumped into some kind of weird spirit there that we weren't really supposed to see, and we were trespassing on their land and they were not happy about it. It still remains one of the weirdest experiences of my life. Now, I've always thought I had some kind of connection with the paranormal, whether I wanted it or not, and one of those actually come from being on site during my job. Now, as part of my job, I had to go every so often to check out some environmental thing. I won't bore you with the details, but I had to check markers at certain points. Mind you, this is well into my adult life, so I wasn't as scared being out in the forest or parts of it, relatively isolated from others. I always had the help of the other people working the same job as me, but it would take them a while to get there. But luckily we had our radios to stay in contact with each other, and this always made me feel a lot more safe than not. Now, I was on my way to one of these specific markers, and as I'm walking, I stopped dead in my tracks. Just in the misty October air above where I'm standing, I can see some people over the hill. Now, once again, this is just like what happened when I was younger with my dad, so I had some paranoia from it, and I decided it'd be best for me to stay outside and not necessarily investigate immediately. I quickly come off of the main road that I'm on, and face away from the sun and quickly go into the woods a bit. I stand so that I'm parallel with one of the trees, and just sort of out of sight. I wait for a good four minutes and nothing happens, but something was telling me do not move, and wait and see what happens, and that was just what I did. After another good five or ten minutes of this, I eventually see more figures coming up the road. They get closer and closer and they seem to be armed, causing me to duck down a little bit. Because of the mist, I can't really see exactly who they are or what they're wearing, but they eventually come closer and closer, and I think maybe there's some people lost from a party because they're carrying some kind of big swords and have weird shaped helmets on them and long beards. They get a little bit closer and I can see that what they're wearing is armour and animal clothing. I immediately have flashbacks to what me and my father saw that time. I then realise these look like warriors from a prehistoric time. But the strangest part is, I can't see anything below their knees. It's almost like they're hovering through the ground, which is the strangest part. At first I'm convinced that maybe this is just from the mist and it's kind of obstructing them, but then I realise it's not the case. Literally, it's like they're walking through the ground, which makes me realise these aren't real people. There's probably about seven or eight of them in total, and they don't take notice of me because where I am, and my god, I'm too scared to make it known. I wait for a couple of seconds and look around, just to see if there's any others I have to worry about. Now, they're in absolute silence at this point. I turn back, and they've vanished literally like they didn't exist in the first place. Now the craziest thing about this is there would have been no possible way they could have hidden in that time. So I know something was definitely up. Now after this experience, I immediately went back home and told my dad after my shift what had happened. I didn't tell any of the other workers initially because I didn't want them to think I was off my head, but my dad said, son, where was this? And I explained the exact location, and he then revealed to me something that I couldn't believe. The path that I was standing on was once a medieval road that was discovered not too long ago and was buried about two or so feet beneath the path that had been laid more recently. So that would have made perfect sense as to why I couldn't see from their knees below, which is exactly what I saw. I think that maybe I have some kind of connection to the spiritual world where I can see moments in time that others can't. Now, I haven't told any of my colleagues about what happened in this story per se because, you know, I can't really be bothered with too many questions. If this had have happened and my dad didn't tell me that about the road before, I wouldn't have really questioned it, but knowing this, I can only possibly believe that it was paranormal.
While working as a ranger, I'd made some really good friends, and even when we were off duty, sometimes we'd all go out camping together. One of my favourite places that we'd go camping was deep in the woods somewhere, and it had some cabins there that you could all share and use. We decided to share a couple because it'd kind of be a better laugh than if we were in individual ones and it would save us some money, so that's what we did. Now none of us had actually been out to this spot before, so we were hoping it was going to be quite desolate, and the day that we arrived it was. We were really happy to see no other cars in the car park, but we still had a bit further to go to make sure that nobody else was here. We had to hike for about a good 4 or so hours, so this meant we brought lots of water with us. The journey there was basically uneventful, and we're just sharing different stories. One ranger shared a really weird story about how he saw some lights in the sky that he couldn't really describe. He said apparently one night while he was on duty, he thought he was looking at stars through his binoculars when suddenly, one of them started to move. Then a few more of them moved, and they suddenly vanished. We're all making jokes about his age and him losing it because he's someone who likes to go on about aliens and stuff all the time, but I didn't really believe it, thinking maybe it was some kind of satellites or fireflies or god knows what. He would tell us to knock it off, and he would get a little bit annoyed so we tried not to joke about it too much with him. Some of the rangers had been doing it for years, and some of the others were relatively new, like me. I was new to the job, but not necessarily new to being outdoors. I'd been a boy scout previously, and I had a couple of scary experiences of my own. One that I shared that was really weird was when we all went out on a trip one day with the scouts camping. I had to get up and use the bathroom. You had to go a little bit of a way to get to the outhouse and I didn't mind too much because at the time nothing scary ever really happened to me and I felt pretty invincible with my scout uniform on. Yeah I don't know why but hey, that was my mindset at the time. So I just got finished doing my business and I heard someone go hey, hey. I stopped dead in my tracks because I knew nobody else had come with me. They kept on saying hey. And I looked up, and I could just about make out somebody at the tree line wearing all black. The voice was very deep, and clearly this was an adult, and he said, Hey, and my name, do you want to play hide and seek? I said, No, I should really be getting back now. He says, Come on, your friends are all playing it too. You're missing out. Now, I knew for a fact this wasn't possible, because all of my friends are back at the campsite, so I just turned and ran. I ran all the way back and smartly, or not so smartly, I immediately told the other guys what had happened and they all started panicking. I then had the sense to tell one of the elders there who was leading us and he very quickly made us walk all of the way back to the car and called the police on the way. I never found out exactly what happened from that but it definitely put some paranoia into me naturally. Then. Another one of the scouts actually come up with a somewhat similar story to my own. He said he was actually playing tag this time, to which I joked, you are probably the person out there, and everybody laughed. He said, apparently, they're all playing tag when he seems to get lost out in the middle of nowhere. He said for some reason he didn't panic at all, but he felt strangely drawn to keep on walking further and further into the forest. He said he eventually saw some other people just by a lake and went over to say hey, but something made him stop just before he could actually reach them. For whatever reason, and what he still doesn't know to this day, he decided to duck down and hide. And he said that while hiding, he realised that they were going to pass by him, so he basically buried himself amongst the foliage and tried to cover his skin as much as he could and just get out of sight. Apparently, while walking past, he overheard them saying, I told you this isn't a good place to hide a body, to which the other responded, I'm telling you no one's out here and it's completely fine. Now apparently, he waited here for a good hour or so before eventually emerging. Apparently, he sprinted back to the site and told them what happened, and nobody believed him. The craziest part is they stayed there and finished the trip and they went home like normal, and he never reported it any further, thinking nobody would believe him. 
So yeah, I guess that kind of sets the tone for the kind of stories that we're telling each other. Now, I felt insanely confident being out there with so many different rangers, including myself. I felt invincible being out there on my own with that ranger uniform. Even though we didn't have it on this time, I still had that air of invincibility. So, we eventually make it to the campsite in the cabins, and luckily, nobody else is in sight. Apparently, there was potentially going to be one other person that was going to stay there with us, but they ended up bailing, so they weren't sure if they were going to come or not, and that was fine. So, we set him for the night and made ourselves cosy. We had a good time and eventually got a campfire going and made some food. Now, while we were eating, I looked back at the cabin and I said, hey, I think the other guys turned up because we can see a silhouette in one of the other cabins. I waved, but I don't get a response. I think maybe the person was facing the other way or just didn't take notice of me and didn't think much of it. Now what was strange the following day is literally none of us saw this person re-emerge from the cabin and we didn't hear much of anything. We periodically say hey when we walk past the cabin hoping for someone to emerge but it was really bizarre. Eventually curiosity got the better of one of the others and they went to go and knock for him and found the door locked. That was when we realised that nobody was in there and nothing had changed since we'd last walked past it. Now, I think maybe just maybe my mind was playing tricks on me, but I was pretty convinced I had seen someone in there, and I think this is really odd. So the next few days go completely uneventful, and we have a great time fishing and just hiking, and taking in some of the beautiful scenery around us. It truly was beautiful, and it's something that I really recommend people do, getting out into the great outdoors more if possible. So, we head in for another night, as we're all laying there talking, getting ready to fall asleep, I hear a strange banging sound coming from just under my bed. It's really weird, it sounds like somebody's hitting it with a fist, but it's not possible. There's nothing below us. I think maybe it's some kind of animal that's tried to break in, or maybe it's the other guy outside, so I quickly jump up. I go outside with one of my other friends and we search the perimeter but don't find anything. That's pretty odd. We all think maybe it was just some animal that we didn't expect to be here and set a whim for the night. And we wake up the next day like normal. So, coming towards the end of our trip, we have a usual day of hiking ahead of us. And we're just generally having a good time relaxing. One of us has a guitar with us and he's playing some beautiful music and it sounds like the notes are reflecting off of the water near us which was really beautiful, I have to say. So, we eventually get the fire going again and we're all telling ghost stories to each other. One of us is telling us about how apparently he saw a headless person when he was much younger on holiday somewhere in Europe. And again, we don't really believe him, but you can see he's getting really freaked out. He says apparently he was asleep at the holiday resort with his parents when they thought one of the hotel guests was outside, or maybe staff member. Apparently, his mum went to ask what was wrong, and a figure turned around that was literally headless and seemed to vanish. Yeah, I didn't really believe it much either, and we all joked about this and once again set a whim for the night. Now I don't know why, something just felt different this time. Everything was normal around us, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Something just felt off. Now just as we're settling in, I slowly fall asleep and I'm awoken by a loud banging sound. I think it's one of the other guys who's outside who hasn't been able to get in so I quickly get up. The banging then intensifies and there's slamming on the doors and windows. I look around and I account for everybody still inside. I don't know what the sounds are. I think this is really odd, but just as I go to get up again, I can hear the winds really picking up outside. Convinced now that the other person's actually showed up in the other cabin and wants to get in, I shout out, hey alright I'm coming, I'm coming, and go to open the door but it's locked. 
now I've realized that something's really up. One of my friends says, hey guys, listen. You can hear the banging coming once again from under the bed that I was staying in. None of us know what to do in this moment and my friend looks at me absolutely terrified. None of us know what to do and yet all of us are prepared for being in situations we aren't comfortable with. It's almost a surreal moment where you don't want to move but you feel like staying still is not a good option. This went on for a good 5 more minutes with the banging sounds and eventually the wind stops but the banging sounds continue. It seems like it's impossibly dark outside until eventually it stops. We all remain in complete silence now waiting just to hear if anything else is going to happen. Nothing does and the bravest amongst us, one of my friends, goes and tries the door again and it opens. And the craziest thing? Everything's completely as it should be. And he looks around and there's no signs of any life whatsoever. He comes back in and locks the door behind himself and closes all of the blinds and the sheets covering the windows. Something is definitely off now. One of us decides to stay on guard while the others go to sleep, and one of my friends switches with him after a couple of hours. I was very grateful for this because I was so exhausted from the adrenaline of what had happened that I needed to sleep. I must have only slept for about 20 minutes but god I was grateful for it. The next morning we woke up in silence and none of us really said anything to each other. We all start packing up our things immediately and cancel all the remaining plans for the day. I start to pack up my things and as I move the mattress to get something I placed under the bed, I see a red thing that I didn't notice before. I move the mattress out of the way and eventually pull the bed up and I can see a circle with a pentagram painted in what seems to be blood directly below my bed. I say, my god, guys, guys, and all of the other guys turn around and see what I'm seeing. I'm not joking, I was literally sleeping directly above some kind of god knows what animal or person's blood in the shape of a pentagram. We didn't need to see anything else and we immediately start the hike back. I felt absolutely violated not realising that I was sleeping above this thing. And maybe that was the source of all of the strange things that had happened the following night. I didn't know. I was just furious at the person that we were renting from from not telling us that about the cabins. We eventually get back and I immediately make contact with him. And apparently he knew nothing about it and he said he was going to send one of his guys over there to investigate and clear it up. We agreed that we would never go back to that site again. God knows what happened before or after we were there, but we were happier not knowing. I had a long career spanning many different things and I wore lots of different hats throughout my time. Now some of the most interesting ones happened when I was a lot younger than I am now. I remembered a job that I truly enjoyed and still felt pride about doing even to this day was when I was a fire ranger. Now it basically meant I'd have to brave the scary stairs going up to the top of those big old towers and just keeping a watch out for anything that could be potentially dangerous or a fire. A lot of people don't realise we do more than just look for fires specifically up there and it's a relatively difficult job because you have to look out for other people and other things you might not think about. And of course, you have to try and stay sane up there yourself and make sure that you're not seeing things. Now, this is actually quite difficult to do, especially if you spend all of your time alone there. Now, most of the time I was there, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience, so sometimes I guess the isolation or loneliness would get to me. If ever it got like that, I'd just go down for a little while and just start reading books for a few minutes while periodically looking around to make sure there wasn't anything out of the ordinary. Now there'd been a rumour going round for years about some kind of figure with a dark robe that would just appear in the background and you could kind of see through it. 
It would be hard to describe, but it was almost like when the setting was very dark, this would stand out as being completely out of the ordinary. People described it as a child kind of facing away from you, and slowly fading off into the trees. Originally I didn't really believe it too much. I was more worried about another issue we had. There was an old cabin out there, right in the middle of nowhere in the area that we would cover, and there would always be reports of an elderly gentleman sitting down at the table. He would seemingly be completely oblivious to everyone else. Whenever we went out there to actually go and figure out what was going on or say, hey, you're not meant to be there, he would seemingly disappear as soon as you got close. For a while, we wondered if it was an optical illusion and we actually took out all of the remaining furniture from in there, but he kept on appearing. That was up until there was a really big fire there. What made this place really interesting though is that once it had all burnt down, you could see a basement that we didn't know existed and there's still some of the path to get down into it now. But anyway, that's the story for another time. Today I'd like to share this one with you. I'd been doing my shift for a while now, and not much was out of the ordinary. We did have something weird that I had to investigate at one point. It was probably about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and everything was normal. Like I said, nothing was out of the ordinary this day and it's actually quite peaceful. It's relatively cold out during this moment. And I had a report from some people hiking that apparently they'd seen strange figures not moving out in the forest. I thought, oh god, this is great, this is just what I need when everything's going so well. Kind of hesitant to believe what they're actually seeing and worried that maybe they'll come across a dead body, I decided to investigate. Now the problem is, when I was trying to investigate this, they couldn't really tell me the location they're in. They actually needed help getting back to the main areas. This was actually relatively annoying because it meant I had to spend about 10 days trying to give them directions. Of course it's an exaggeration, but when there's not really reference points, it becomes increasingly difficult for people to know where you're talking about, especially out here, but that's understandable. I eventually wave them off and call in that I need to go and investigate something, and they say it's fine, they're going to cover me for a bit. I have to wait for a while for the other ranger to come over and quickly get into my tower so I can go out there. I tell them that it's potentially a body and they say just proceed with caution because you don't know who's out there. After waiting for a good half hour or so, eventually my cover came. We said hey and the other ranger said do you want to take the truck out, it's already running. I said sure. I got in and immediately some sound blasted my eardrum. It scared the life out of me. I took a second before I realised that he had the radio on absolute blast and honestly it left a ringing in my ear. He apologised not realising it was going to come on again but honestly it annoyed me because it really unsettled me. I drove round to the rough area that the hikers were able to tell me that they saw the figures and I found absolutely nothing. The trees are quite dense in this area and there's lots of shadows cast by the trees so it actually becomes relatively difficult to navigate or see anything. Regardless of isolation, your mind will play tricks on you and luckily for me nothing was out of the ordinary. I decide to head off a little further now and leave the truck. I don't have a flashlight or anything because it's still quite early in the day at this point I just decide that I need to go and see what's up. I'm not that far away from a stream which I actually find really peaceful, and I decide that after a while of looking, I'm going to go and rest here for a little bit. I can't see anything out of the ordinary at first, I just constantly look behind myself to make sure that I don't get lost on my little journey. I proceed ahead but don't find much of anything, deciding that it's probably best just to go over to the stream and relax. Now the area itself is really beautiful, I decided just to stand off to the embankment and appreciate how beautiful this place is. If you're hiking you can do a really nice loop around here and honestly it's breathtaking. It's the kind of place that no matter where you take a picture you could put it on a wall if that makes sense. I find a nice little spot and sit down, 
just on a rock that's out of the moisture from the ground. I take a few moments just to meditate and decide to be silent. This can actually be quite a good technique if you can't find anything on a search. That's because you're probably going to hear people if you can't see them, if there's any about. I start to think more and more that the hikers are just kind of losing it a bit and are just playing tricks with me, so I decide that I should probably head back. I then leave this stream and jokingly say goodbye knowing that I don't want to leave this area so soon. I then make it back to the truck and I start off again in the direction that I've come. I radio in that I've not found anything but I'll be coming back soon. I drive for about another two minutes and I spot it. Someone just standing there, staring off into the tree line. It's quite difficult to make out exactly what they're wearing, but they kind of look like a grey colour. They almost seem too still to be human, which I think's really odd. I stop quickly and before I get out, I decide to grab my binoculars. I then realise that I don't have them. Oh no, I've left them in the tower, I realise. I decide the best thing I can do is very slowly make my way over there instead of announcing my presence. I think it's odd they've not moved at all, or really reacted to the sound of the truck, or maybe they didn't hear it. There can be an issue if it's like a lost hiker or someone who's hit their head and they're kind of shocked, or not really in a normal state of mind. I realise that this person's probably about 5 feet tall and just standing there completely still. What's really odd about it is they almost look like they're covered in bones, if that makes sense. I slowly edge closer and closer and I can't believe what I'm seeing. I can see a person standing there perfectly still, but they don't look right. It looks like they're not wearing any clothes, but I can see them and they're right in front of me. I then get a little closer and realise that it's not a person at all. It's an arrangement of wood, perfectly resembling a person. I look to my left and I can't see anything else. I've just come from the right side, so I know I should be pretty safe to investigate. I very hesitantly make my way up to this weird thing, and it's basically a figure made out of wood and carvings to perfectly resemble a person. I think, huh, there's no dead body at least. But who put it here and why? I think this is extremely odd, and it's still something that kind of scares me a bit when I think of it. I go to the other side and there's no face. I look up, and my heart drops. There's two more figures further off, but they're more like people this time. I quickly duck down, but realise it's futile. These people are standing there by the stream that I've literally just come from. They literally look like headless figures. I realise now that there's something really odd here, but I'm not sure whether they're people or not or just more of these things. I can then see another behind and another. I realise then that they're forming a circle. I realise now that I'm not in too much danger and slowly make my way over. And I'll be surprised. They are wooden figures, just like the other one, just not very detailed this time. Standing there. Placed perfectly while being still. It's very bizarre because their hands are relatively detailed and it really gives me the creeps. I look around for whoever put these here, but it's literally like somebody's just placed them out of nowhere. I think this is really bizarre. Maybe it's some kind of art project that I'm not aware of, but that doesn't make sense. I almost think for a second it's kind of cool. I take a moment to scour the horizon, and I can't see anything else and decide that it's really time to head back. I can't wait to report this in because this is really weird. I slowly begin making my way back towards the truck and I take one last look at these things, and they haven't moved thankfully. I kind of expected them to move forward. I almost thought about for a joke bringing one on the back of the truck and just setting it up somewhere to scare the other guy that was working with me, but I think this is a bad idea. 
and I don't really want to get in trouble or get some weird reputation at work. So I decide just to head over and act like nothing was wrong and just say, hey, I'm coming over, sorry about the delay on the radio. And then make it back to the tower and say, hey, I'm here, Andy. He says, hey, come on up quickly. And I make my way up. Now, I haven't told him anything at this point, And he says, there's something weird. I keep seeing something white just off in the distance, sort of moving around and disappearing every so often periodically. I say, oh, I know just what that is. I've literally just come across some really weird sculptures in the middle of this forest. They look very much like people, but do you know about any art projects? Art projects? Andy laughs and says, no, of course not. Who would put them out here? He says, did you bring one with you? And I jokingly said, yeah, I did. It's right here behind me. And he says, no, cut it off. Did you actually bring one? I say, no, why would I do that? I tell him roughly where it is so he can go and investigate. And he says he's going to check it out later. He then says, seriously, did you see anything out there unusual? I say, yeah, of course, the figures, but he says, no, any actual people. I say, no, and that I'm pretty sure there's no bodies out here that we have to look for, and he hears that's a relief. He thinks, too, the hikers probably saw this and got confused and scared. Now, are you absolutely certain the hikers didn't leave these here? I say, yes, Andy, of course. I would have told you, and why would I have investigated? He said sorry for the stupid question, but he says he really wants to keep an eye out on this figure he saw. Now, at the time, he'd been working quite a few long shifts and never reported anything like it before, so I say, come on, just relax. I think it's just the isolation getting to you, and he says you're right. He then hands over the reins to me once again, and we say our goodbyes. He says he's going to check it out on the way and takes the truck with him, and with that he leaves. Now I do keep my eye out for probably a good another 20 minutes trying to see anything out there, but I don't see anything at all. Every so often the trees kind of move, and I think this is odd, but I think it's just where I'm staring at it for too long. I look around in the rough area that Andy's drove off to, and there it is. A white figure, just standing there perfectly. I really start laughing to myself realising what he's done. He's placed one of them wooden figures there, obviously to scare me. I think, ha, oh, you could have got me with that, to be honest. And I turn around and just completely ignore it. I then decide that I should call on him and make sure that he got back okay. And he did. I say, that was a nice little prank you did on me. And he says, what prank? I say, yeah, leaving that thing there. And he sounds very confused, and his confusion actually put fear into me. He's 100% certain that he hasn't done anything the type. He said, listen, all I've done is drove back, and I was kind of freaked out by that figure I saw earlier. That's when the penny dropped. There's definitely something up now. I say, yeah, I'm going to investigate it quickly. He says, please, please check in with me again, and I say, yeah, well, I promise and I quickly head down from the tower. I look up, and the thing's gone. I was certain I saw one of those wooden figures there earlier, and I feel stupid now going back saying that there's nothing there. I get on the radio and say, oh, don't worry, it's probably just nothing. I think it's just my mind messing with me from what you said earlier. I always thought I had an overactive imagination. Andy says, yeah, yeah, just be careful, buddy. Something's definitely up. With that, the radio switches off, and I decide to lay down for a bit. Now, I was actually pretty bored most of the times up here, so I decided to do some drawings. I decide that I'm just going to draw the horizons and some of the landscapes around me. To be honest, this is actually quite good because it really keeps my mind active. It'd be really funny if I drew a big fire and didn't realise it until afterwards, right? But anyway, I stop my drawings and keep checking out for any danger periodically again. And then I see it, once more. There's a white figure out there, definitely moving and somewhat glowing. That was the part I really don't understand. It was literally illuminating some kind of light, or at least that's how it appeared. 
That's it. I have to investigate now. I quickly grab my jacket and put my pencil down and decide that I'm going to have to figure out what's wrong here because this is really odd. I'm much more cautious now because the night sets in and my eyes haven't really adjusted to the darkness that well because I had a small lamp on so I could do my drawings. Now I get to the bottom of the steps and I start heading in the direction that I saw this weird figure in. At first I start jogging, then I realise how unfit I am and I have to stop after about 30 seconds. That's odd. I've always been pretty in shape but maybe I've just let myself go a bit. Who knows. I then go to the exact area where I saw this thing not 5 minutes ago and there's nothing there. As I'm standing there, I can hear a faint laughter. It's really creepy because it literally sounds like a small child laughing. I suddenly feel very faint and realise that maybe there's a missing child out here. I have to figure out what this is now. I suddenly become more brave and start sprinting towards where I think the sound's coming from. I run and run and I don't seem to be getting any closer to the sound. I'm quiet for a moment and I can just hear the sounds of the nature and the trees around me and I realise that something's wrong. Why has the sound stopped suddenly? Why couldn't I find it? Then, just ahead again, I can see some white figure just moving behind a tree. I decide that I have to jog over there now and figure out what this is. This time it doesn't move luckily and I say hey I've got you to myself, half expecting to find either somebody out here who's completely off their mind that's fell and hit their head, or maybe a lost child even, but this seems a little too big now. I sprint and get just to the edge of the tree and decide I'm going to jump out and shout freeze just in case there's anyone dodgy. And I jump, freeze, nothing. Not a sound. I look around quickly and do a 360 and I can't find anything. I decide that I should get back to the station now and maybe call in some help and I head out. I start picking up the pace and I can hear my footsteps slowly getting louder and louder as I'm somewhat panicking now and walking somewhat clumsily at more of a hiker's pace. Now I swear to you as I got onto the first steps of my tower that I can hear laughter again. I stop for a moment to confirm it then very quickly start going up the steps. I get back in and radio in what I've heard and that's when my friend Andy says that that's exactly what he heard too. A strange faint laughter but he thought it was coming from me originally. He says unless you have 100% confirmation there's not much he could do but just to be careful and not worry too much. Be careful, that's great. How am I going to sleep at night now? I think. Yeah I can lock the door off but that's not really an effective way to stop somebody breaking in. Anyone could just bust the door in or even set fire to this thing or knock it over or god knows what. I say yeah that's fine and I decide that I really need to figure out what's wrong here. I sit on kind of like the balcony thing where I can see around, but this is one dimensional mind you, but I don't see much of anything. I think maybe just maybe I've been out here for too long, and do you know what they say, you can only see faces you've dreamt of. Maybe I was so tired I was kind of half dreaming and it was based off the wooden figures I saw before. Then I remembered, what were they? Why were they out there? Strangely enough, they seemed relatively similar in height to that thing that I saw. And maybe Andy wasn't actually seeing anything and there was a reason for me to be concerned. Now, I half fall asleep on top of this balcony again and kind of hit my head to wake myself up, which is actually quite funny. I remembered laughing think, well there's my alarm clock as I've raised my head up and just at the base of my tower I can see a white figure somewhat glowing. I wipe my eyes and think this cannot be real, this must be some kind of dream. I quickly look at my watch and I've only been asleep for about 10 minutes. 
In my dream, I felt like I was there for an eternity, but of course I wasn't. It was only a number of minutes. But I have to investigate now. I'm very convinced that my mind's just gone a little bit weird, and I decide to head down. When I take my very first step, I can hear something running. I think, right, I've got you now. I lurch forward but nearly go off the edge of the tower because I'm still not really woken up at this point and I'm almost off balance. I manage to steady myself and much slower now make my way down. I say hey. There's nothing. I then shout out another hey again and I'm met with silence. I'm actually getting relatively frustrated now and I kid you not, I can hear the laughing once again. I spin around and I can see the figure. Now through coincidence or not, it was actually heading to where I saw the wooden sculptures earlier. I didn't realise this at the time, but looking back on it is kind of weird. This thing is kind of sprinting off into that direction, suddenly not making any sound at all. And me being me, I sprint straight after it thinking maybe it is somebody that's really off their head now and needs emergency medical attention or maybe an evacuation. I know if you hit certain parts of your head you can really lose it due to the brain swelling, but if you have brain swelling due to the intracranial pressure, you can easily die from it within a matter of hours, and if that was the case, then this person wouldn't have much longer left. So, I chase after them. Now, I'm struggling for direction at this point, but I can always see the tower so I know roughly where I'm going. I never seem to be able to catch up with this thing, which is really weird because based off the adrenaline I have and my long legs, I can sprint pretty quick. And it doesn't make sense for pretty much anything to be able to outrun me out here. Especially because as a fire ranger, I'm always out in the forest. I'm always going to have that edge of knowing the environment and being used to the terrain but it didn't seem to apply now, which is really bizarre. It was almost like this thing had a supernatural ability to be able to just, I don't know, vanish at will. I ran as quick as I possibly could for as long as possible until eventually I had to catch my breath once again. Now I sprinted and sprinted until eventually I got to the exact spot that I saw this thing go to just behind some of the trees and down a small hill, and there was nothing. Kind of worried that now something bigger than what I know about is happening. I feel pretty scared, and I just stop and put my hand into my head, and just sit there for a moment. I've realised now that I'm not really chasing this thing. Whatever this thing is, is kind of playing a game with me almost, and I'm not sure how to make it stop. That's when I see it. Some strange light just illuminating behind me. I stand up and turn around to see what it is. And for a few seconds, I can see a very bright figure just standing there about five feet tall. Too bright for me to be able to look at properly, literally hurting my eyes. And then, I wake up off the floor. Now... What's really weird is that when I come to, it's not like I'm out of it, I'm immediately with my senses again, but something just feels different this time. The atmosphere just feels completely different. I get up and look around and realise that my eyes really hurt, like when you've been staring at the sun for too long, like really bad. Even to the point that, you know when you've looked at something bright and it kind of lingers in your eyes for a second and goes weird colours? I still have that just a little bit. I look up at the sky and I can still see the stars so luckily I'm not blinded, so I'm happy about that. Now in somewhat a state of shock and confusion, I look around and realise that lots of the scrubs and things on the floor have kind of burnt a bit. It's very difficult to describe but it's almost like the life has been sucked out of them similar to when something was burnt but through heat but not fire if that makes sense, and it pretty much forms a perfect circle around where I'm standing. I look down at my arms and they're somewhat sunburnt almost, appearing much more red than usual, and it's not on the other side of my arms too, which is really odd. 
I feel my face and that's completely fine, but my arms are quite burnt, which is something I've never experienced before. I look around and this thing is long gone. Luckily for me, there is evidence of this circle here, so I decide now that I'm going to have to get back to the tower, and in a moment of clarity realise I should get a shift on, and start travelling very quickly. In no time at all I make it back up to the tower and radio in what's happened, and Andy, bless him, comes over to see what happened. Upon arrival he says, God, what happened to your arms? And I can't really explain it in the moment and just say, look, you have to come here. I take him back to the exact spot where that flash was and I explain what happened. And he can't believe his eyes. It's almost like there was a small heat wave around this area only. And so much of the circle has died. It's only about six feet across, but it's all the same. And it forms almost a perfect circle. He says that he's going to radio it in and just to take a break for a moment and that's what he does. I go with him back up to the tower and he says that he's going to stay with me for the rest of the night to make sure nothing else happens and that's what he does. I fall asleep quite quickly and I'm woken up by the pain of the burning on my arms. We make eye contact and you know when you look and say a thousand words, it's one of those moments. He just nods and we both know that we have to go back to that circle again. On the walk he tells me nothing else has happened but he really needs sleep. But we get there and thankfully for our sanity it's still there. The cover come over and we decided not to tell them what happened. We've already made a report about it and we don't want to scare them. And we need to confirm it's not only us seeing these things and we say goodbye to them. And luckily Andy offers to drive me home. Now nothing ever come with that investigation, and we never saw that flash of light again. I'm still not sure exactly what it is, but it must be something paranormal. And what's really truly bizarre is that life never grew in that spot again. Eventually the ground just becomes somewhat sodded dirt, but nothing ever grew again. Literally, for about another 10 years as I was working there. It still is and has remained one of the most unexplainable things that ever happened to me and I can only really think of it as being paranormal or some kind of supernatural energy that we're not supposed to mess with and somehow I ended up doing so unwillingly. Now this is when I was only about seven and we're camping near a spring we swam at often. Now I woke up one morning and went down to the spring to wash up and there's a huge alligator that hissed at me from the bank. It was probably 20 feet long and easily 5 times my height. I stopped and ran out of there. Weird things happen in the Appalachian Mountains. They're as old as time itself and people who have lived there may be the first to tell you that it can become otherworldly, and sometimes you just have to turn a blind eye for your own sanity, or you'll just be like, yep, this is just how it is. I grew up in a small town outside of Hishwan National Forest. Lots of waterfalls, hikes, great views. It's an amazing place to be, especially in summer. But what happened to me was in the dead of winter, when I was about 17. Before I write all of this, let me preface by saying at the time, i just got my very first prescription glasses and still wasn't really used to keeping them on 24-7. But, although my vision was blurry, I know something just isn't right when I see it. When I was 17, I decided to do my senior project on nature photography. What better place to take some great photos of the forest I said to my mother if she'd drive me into Big Ash and let me take some pictures as she winded through the woods. It was winter, so the trees were bare and the sky was grey. It was still fairly pretty out to be honest and I just wanted to take some pictures of the local flora. So my mum pulls over to let me walk down a trowel that I'd been over hundreds of times. After a short walk through the woods, 
you end up on the river bank, a great swimming hole in the summer, and the way the bank curved, you could walk along the little stony shore a little way past the trail. Mind you, I was wearing a bright orange raincoat, so it was incredibly visible. So I'm crouching down to take a picture of an old railroad spike that's been sticking out of the earth for years when, all of a sudden, I realise there's no sound. Like, honestly, it was really scarily silent. No birds chirping, no nature sounds or anything. It's like I didn't even hear the sound of water flowing. As this is happening, I realise exactly how visible and vulnerable I am. If you've experienced some kind of primal fear, you'll know what I mean. It's like an alarm bell is going off in your head screaming danger, danger. As I'm sitting there with this feeling washing over me, I start hearing crunching footsteps around. Again, all of the trees around are so bare that there isn't any foliage to block any view. I hear these footsteps, like, slowly getting two feet closer and closer, and it's from the opposite side of the river bank. I'm watching very closely and I can't move. I can't move. Whatever I saw was all grey and not a human, but tall, and appears to be on two legs. It was getting closer and closer and right as it's about to reach the bank of the river, I snapped out of the trance and really sprint. I've never been so scared in my life. I booked it back to my mum's car and was so obviously out of breath that she says what's wrong? After I explained what happened she looked really scared and said that while I've gone down the trowel she got this weird fear that suddenly something was wrong and was about to come and find me when I ran back. We left after that and to this day sometimes we will talk about it with no explanation. I've told my boyfriend this story and he insists that it could have been a skinwalker. I've got no idea what it was, although I wish I'd gotten a better look. I'm glad I ran when I did. Has anyone experienced anything like this or is it just me? My husband and his sister went hiking in September or November 2020 when this happened. They were hiking sharp top in southwest Virginia. They hiked the entire trail without incident, but as they were coming down the trail back towards their car, they noticed a black, opaque figure at the foot of the trail near the road. This figure was almost opaque, but they see a white at the top where a face would be, but no other features. The best I can say second-handedly to describe it is a no face from Sprint Away but basically no facial features. It's roughly five or six feet tall and glided across the road to the tree line. Once it hit the tree line, it basically disappears. Now, it's weird too because it's soundlessly. It's full, so there's plenty of leaves on the floor, so you would have heard something. He said they're roughly 40 yards away from it, but it was still light out for them to see fully what was happening. This was my husband's first experience with anything paranormal, but my SOL has experienced other things. We haven't found anything similar to this, but it was so weird. So in 1992, I went camping with three friends. We had all recently graduated high school. We're about 40 miles from the closest town in the desert canyonlands of the Utah border with Colorado. It was overcast which made it so you can't really see further than your hand in front of the darkness. So we're sitting around a campfire having a beer listening to the coyotes when suddenly they really go quiet. I had a look at my friend to see if he notices it too and he gives me a scared look saying what the hell is that? As I turned around and look up, everything seems to go dark. It really seemed silent for a long time. Even my thoughts were silent until eventually someone asked, What happened? My fuzzy brain remembered my flashlight. I turned it on and went to see why the fire went out. There was barely any coals. It looked like it had been out for a while and everyone was scared. There was this feeling that something strange had happened. Everybody agreed, but couldn't think of what it is. I said to my friend what do you think it is that he saw, but he couldn't remember saying anything. 
we're freaked out because the rest of the night we really want the sun to come up and I can't explain what happened. We weren't drunk. I felt like we lost time but have no proof. I've always had this nagging feeling that something happened that we can't remember. Something negative and probably scary. I used to work on the north slope of Alaska in the oil industry. The work we were doing required us to travel far out into the Alaskan Petroleum Reserve which is basically just untamed tundra wilderness for hundreds of miles. The oil companies would build these long ice roads in the winter that would actually lead to exploration drilling pads. Now basically, our job was to go out after they finished the initial drilling and test rock formations for oil producing qualities. It was mid-January, the sun hadn't quite come up yet, and when I say the sun hadn't come up, I mean in almost a month and a half, and the polar nights are intense. This particular well site we're travelling to was about 60 miles west of Alpine, Alaska, really deep into the wilderness. Our job took a week, but we managed to finish and are heading back to our camp to finish up for our hitch and go home. Now at the beginning of the end, the ice roads are guard shacks that you have to go into and check out for safety. There's no cell reception or radios working, only up at a distance. So if you don't check in or out at a set time, they'll actually come looking for you to make sure you're okay. Now it's about four in the morning. Not that it mattered in the land of endless night and we're halfway across the ice roads. Travel was slow with the speed limit on the roads only 25 miles per hour. When something appears on the road in our headlights, it was a man in jeans and a sneakers and a hoodie walking down an ice road in the wilderness at 4am in minus 20. It's not really unusual for locals to go out hunting, but I don't know, maybe his snowmobile broke down and he's trying to get back to the guard shack. He didn't acknowledge us at all as our trucks rolled up next to him. He kept shuffling forward and doesn't seem cold. His clothing, which is completely not suited for this weather, appears warm and dry. So it's definitely bizarre at that moment. I roll down the window and say, are you okay? He doesn't acknowledge us, but just keeps going forward. Face completely blank, devoid of emotions or thoughts really. The other guy in the truck suggested that maybe he was in shock and had an accident. I continued rolling my truck alongside him as he trudges down the road, still trying to get his attention. Even in this extreme cold, I could occasionally get whiffs of a peculiar smell coming off him. He smelled acidic, if that makes sense. There's just a lot of things about this guy that really make my hair stand on end. Now the guy behind me is in the truck's crew cabin, actually had enough of this. He rolled down the window and reached out to grab the guy. He later said he was just going to try and shake him and get him out of it. Now before my friend could actually reach him, he suddenly spun around and latched onto my buddy's arm. He glared at my buddy and then at me with this look of pure rage, not removing his hand from his arm. If emotions had a physical temperature, this guy could have melted everything there. My buddy groans in pain as he tries to get free. Now at that moment, the guy starts screaming in our faces. There was so much hate and rage and anger in that scream, it was really terrifying. I slammed on the gas and spun out on the ice for a second before catching the wheel. The popsicle dude still had a hold of my buddy's arm was trying to pull him out of the truck. He was running alongside the truck while the other guys in the cab held on to my friend to make sure that he stays in. After several moments, it could probably have only been a few seconds at most, my buddy got free from the guy and we start hauling it, getting another 30 miles out of the road. We check in with the guards and report what we've seen and the guard looks at us like we're pulling a prank. But policy said that they had to check it out regardless. My buddy's arm was sore when he pulled back the sleeve, you could actually see bruises there. We filed a report with the guard and we're told to head back to the camp. None of us really wanted to talk about what had just happened and the drive the rest of the way is really quiet. We flew home the following day. The next time that we saw the guard at his shack, we asked him if he ever saw Mr. Popsicle again. 
He told us that they searched up and down for a solid 12 hours during their shift and never saw anything. Not even tracks in the snow leading off or anything that would indicate anyone was there. He told us it was a good prank and that he'd get us back for it next time. But it wasn't a prank. Who would make up a story like that and who would willingly bruise up their arm that bad for a prank? Now that area of Alaska is a weird place and my god did this experience scare me. Now, this past weekend, I was on a camping trip with some friends and my buddy, and we decided to go for a hike to scout for some elk because we're going to be hunting there next month when the season opens. So we walk through the woods and eventually wind up on two back roads. My buddy's carrying his daughter and we've got a couple of dogs with us. Then out of nowhere, we hear the crack of a rifle shot in the very distance and the sound of a bullet whizzing past us. We're about 10 feet apart, thinking someone's trying to shoot my dog perhaps. Maybe she looks like a coyote. I run up into the road clearing, screaming to stop shooting. I see a guy standing there with a rifle, looking dumber than a box of rocks, so I pull out my pistol and tell him that he almost shot us, and he makes bizarre excuses. Now, he's acting like he's hunting for some kind of bird that's not actually here. It got pretty heated and he threatened me before my buddy told him to calm down. Plus, we had a kid with us, so this guy shouldn't have been pointing the gun in our direction. He then says, oh, he'll find me in town, even though he 100% is wrong in the situation. So my dad and grandpa like to fish and hunt a lot. One night they decided to spend the night on the river in the Appalachian Mountains. It was really late, and they said they heard these awful screams coming from the woods on the opposite side of the water. It definitely wasn't a mountain lion or anything like that. And my dad's a pretty big guy who doesn't really get scared easily, but in that moment he was absolutely frozen with fear, explaining the sound as absolutely inhuman. He felt like whatever it was wanted them to know that they were there and that they weren't happy about it. It gives him goosebumps thinking about it. Now, we used to have a stationary caravan on a campground right at the northern sea. So basically, the campground's really small, and there was like 40 or 50 other caravans stationed there, and a few empty slots for people with tents, we stayed there for holiday one year and for some reason left a day earlier than we planned. On this particular night, someone got murdered right next to our caravan. It was two women sleeping in a rented one and the ex-boyfriend of one of the women who went to the campground at night, stabbing his ex and her friend, then dragging them out of the caravan and they passed away right next to our one. My brother and I were going camping together. We were kind of going through a bit of a rough patch and it would help get our bond back together. We hadn't been camping for years and were somewhat excited to do so. We did it all the time when we were younger. And I guess not much had changed really. We had different lives but we were still brothers so we needed to fix our relationship. Now for the first part of the trip, everything was going very well. We found a beautiful clearing to go and set up our camping site in, and that's what we done. As we head over, I noticed that my brother's hair was standing on end. I thought that was really bizarre, and before I can mention it to him, he tells me the same, and we think this is really odd. Both of our hairs are standing completely up on end, and there's a strange electric smell outside. We realise that we need to go back to the car to go and get something, so we both head back in. We ended up closing the car door and putting on the heating just so we could warm up, and I'm not joking, one second after turning it on, there's the loudest explosion sound of my life, and everything goes completely white, and I'm blinded temporarily. We look at each other in absolute shock and are frozen in fear. 
Then we hear the loudest thunder crashing immediately afterwards. We turn around and notice a fire next to our camping site. Our camping site has just been hit by a huge bolt of lightning and destroyed half of our contents there. We were literally only seconds away from death. I don't know what happened. I'll say the words and let them paint the picture for you to experience what I did. I'll set the scene. I'm an avid urban explorer and always have been. I love nothing more than going to old abandoned buildings and seeing what I could find, but every so often you'll get far more than you're looking for. And luck would have it that one day it was going to be my turn too. Now I had a couple of friends of mine. I'm not going to say their names or my own, but I'll just call them Ben and Ryan. Now we would love going to these strange places that nobody seemed to really know about. And one day, Ryan suggested a place that was really out in the middle of nowhere, and that apparently he'd only seen once before. It was an old house that apparently had quite a large basement area in it. This place had been abandoned for a long, long time, and I couldn't wait to get there and explore. Now the problem was actually finding the place. Now we had to drive for a good four or so hours to actually reach roughly where it should have been, and we were truly driving out into the middle of nowhere to get here. Now the drive was beautiful. It was a lovely warm summer's day, and the heat really made you feel comfortable. We're having a really good time making some jokes with each other and having a laugh generally. We ended up pulling up to basically exactly where the support is supposed to be, and there's nothing there. A little confused, Ryan offers to walk off ahead of us to find the place. I sit on the trunk of the car with Ben and it's pleasantly warm in the summer heat. Now we truly are out in the sticks here with not much around us and not many sounds, just the odd crickets and maybe water bugs or whatever else is out here. We actually have to be careful of different scorpions and other animals like that. Eventually we can hear, hey, come over here, you guys have got to check this out. Excitedly, me and Ben jump off and go and see what Ryan's making fuss about. And there it is. Just off in the horizon is an old building. This thing was really big. Like, not a mansion, but just under the size of it. And it looks beautiful. If I had to guess, I would say this thing sat abandoned pretty much since the day that somebody first went in there. Now, I have this pretty nice feeling that's almost inviting and it's something I can't really describe. It's almost like something was drawing me in there. The other two seem a little more hesitant than me to go in, but I'm really excited now. And we start making our way over there. While walking, I'm struck with how happy I feel. It's almost like a high that I can't describe. Almost like I was coming to something that I was truly belonging to. I look over to my two friends and they don't seem as excited as me, just more focused on getting there and somewhat hesitant. I laugh and say, hey, come on guys, it's going to be fine, there's literally nothing to worry about, come on, this is going to be great. Now, as always, we never go through the front door, just in case there's anybody living there that's not supposed to be, or any kind of animals that are looking for food, so we decide to go around the back. This place has a beautiful porch and it's just really pretty. We realise that there's a window that we can prop open to enter, and I opt to go first. I slowly pry the window open and manage to pop it up. While opening the window, I actually get a splinter in my hand, but strangely I can't feel it at all. It's quite a big and nasty one too, and I head in. I then turn around to help my two friends get in too. I turn and say, come on, get in. And Ben's quite hesitant about going in, saying, I don't know why, I have a really bad feeling about this. I say, come on, stop being stupid, it's going to be great. 
We drive out Harold this way and he reluctantly follows in, and so does Ryan. Now all three of us are here. Now the building smells old, but as I turn around, I'm suddenly struck by how nice this place is. It's basically a time capsule and it almost feels odd. I feel weirdly welcome and like I'm at home now. And we slowly make our way through the first room, out of the kitchen. Now there's no food of course, but honestly, if we open the fridge and see some it wouldn't surprise me. My two other friends have started to warm into it now, and they're starting to enjoy the experience too. We decide that we're going to first explore the upstairs parts of the house, and then we're going to explore the ground level. We now come into a massive main hall or living area, which still has a chair there that looks like it's never been used before, and a really old clock. For some reason I keep being drawn towards the clock and I'm not sure why this is. Of course it's sitting timeless but it kind of emphasises the feel of the whole situation. It really feels like we've stepped back in time at this point and I just really feel welcome here and I don't know why. We decide that we're going to attack the upstairs and we all go up there with me leading the way. I take a couple of steps onto the stairs and I almost feel like I know my way round. It's really bizarre, but I seem to kind of know the layout in my head naturally. We get to the very top and I first go into the bathroom. I look out of the window and it's really a beautiful summer's day, and the other two split off exploring some old bedrooms and things. I go to turn on the tap and there's no water whatsoever. I try and run the bath but again there's nothing. I turn around and head over to my friends who are in the other rooms. They're inside the main bedroom now and they're sitting on the bed. I lay on the bed and it's extremely comfortable. My friends say let's explore the other rooms and I say I'll catch up with you in a minute. I lay back and for some reason I can't seem to help but smile. I feel really at peace now and for some reason something's drawing me into the lower level of the house. Now I tell my friends that I'm gonna go and investigate further and they say okay, and I start heading down the stairs. I feel very happy and kind of glide down, almost like I'm in a dream. Now it's really bizarre, it really is like stepping into a museum or time capsule. Everything's just perfect, almost too perfect. I make my way into another room next to the kitchen and I realise that there's a large picture frame here and a cabinet. I almost feel drawn to this spot and I don't know why. I go to move the picture frame in case there's something else next to it like a picture that's fell off and I realise that it starts to fall down. I quickly steady myself bracing to catch it and then I realise it's a door. I can slowly pull it open and it silently releases, and there's a stairway behind it. I'm looking into the darkness when I realise that there's a light switch next to me. I flick it and to my surprise, the lights come on, and I can see a little further down. The staircase winds down and I slowly close the picture behind me on its hinges and close the door. I'm not sure why that I didn't tell my friends where I was going, but I decide that I have to press on and explore further. I make my way down the stairs and turn, and I'm suddenly met with a couple of doors in a large room. I can't believe how big this place is. I don't know what door to go to, but I seem almost drawn to one. It's the one directly ahead of me. I open it, and I'm met by the light from the switch that I've just turned on. There's just a single light hanging from the ceiling there, and more rooms. I think this is odd, and think maybe they didn't finish furnishing down here, or maybe it was some kind of bunker I don't know what, but it's kind of weird. There's no furniture whatsoever here, and again, I'm drawn to keep going forward. I don't know what was in those other rooms to my left and right, but I open the door ahead of me, and I'm met with a very long corridor. 
It's almost impossibly long, and there's a light leading down to the end, but I can't really see what's down there. Maybe this was some kind of escape hatch or something, just in case there was an emergency, and it probably comes out somewhere else and I think this is really cool and decide that I need to investigate it. And this feeling, I can't describe this feeling of being completely drawn into somewhere, almost like it was calling me to go further. I decide that before I go on, I should see what else there is, and I close this door. I then turn around and open another one to my left, and it's the same again, an empty room with four doors which is actually very confusing to me. I continue ahead and I start to feel quite lightheaded. I think maybe the air's not so good down here, and I turn around and come out the one I've just went to, but there's nothing but more doors in here. Starting to panic now, I'm not sure exactly where I am, and I call out for my friend's name, but there's no reply. I do it again and I'm met with silence. I can now hear a scratching on the side of one of the doors that I've just come from. I hesitantly open it thinking it's them, and I'm met with that corridor once more. I feel absolutely drawn in this moment to go further down, and I hear a door close behind me. I turn around and for some reason I'm at peace once again, and I feel like I just have to go on further. I'm completely disorientated at this point and I don't really know how to get back, and I think my way out might be up ahead of me. I decide that I shouldn't go on without my friends and I stare down into that corridor, almost in a trance. I don't know what I was looking for or looking at, but there was something there and it feels like everything around me goes black and all I can see is the end of that tunnel and another door. I have to know what's in it and I have to investigate it, but maybe just maybe I should get the others. I turn around now and come back in again. I go straight and straight but become completely disorientated as I close the second door behind me and there's just more doors. I go to open the one to my left and I realise that it doesn't open. There's another one behind me and it's the same again. Now I think my panic might have set in finally and I feel my heart beat through my hands. My hands are now shaking as I open another door and it's the same again. But this time, I know that it's going to lead me to the corridor because I can see the light coming down it and now I'm really confused. I call out once again for my friends and I'm met with silence, and I swear every so often I can hear some kind of footsteps behind me, and that's when everything went black. The next thing I know, I'm being moved but can't see anything, and I'm being slapped with water poured over my head. I'm very disorientated and confused about what's happening, until then I realise it's one of my friends calling out my name saying you've got to drink this water and I suddenly come through. I go to wipe my face and I realise that I'm absolutely drenched in a cold sweat and they say thank god we thought we were going to lose you for a second. I can then see the car just up ahead and I feel very weak almost like I can't move. I keep on seeing black sparks everywhere where I'm not with it. They hold the water to my mouth and say you've got a drink, and I nod and start drinking water like I've never drank before. I say what happened and they said, we couldn't find you for hours, we were looking for you and getting really worried, then we realised that the picture was off the frame and investigated it and found the way down that you went. We found you in the very bottom of the stairs, covered in sweat, with some big marks across your arm and on your back. I say what marks? My friend then lifts up my shirt and points and there's very large scratch marks on my back and on the backs of my arms. I can't believe it, I say how does this happen? What happened to me? And they say we don't know. I told them I was screaming out for you guys but you didn't reply. My friends then look at each other and say we didn't hear a thing. 
We just thought you fell over and got hurt. And now the three of us lock eyes. Without saying anything, my friend quickly gets onto the ignition and floors it and we slowly speed out of there. As we quickly drive away, I then explain to my friends what happened as I'm more with it now and then they give their story and look very scared. They say that I disappeared for literally hours without making a sound and they kept calling out for me but couldn't hear anything, just some kind of laughter coming from somewhere else that they thought was me. I said laughing, no, I wasn't laughing whatsoever, and my friend Ben goes very pale suddenly. He then says, let's never go back to this place again, I don't know if we're alone in there. And we drive off, making the rest of the trip back until eventually stopping to get some food after three or so hours and more water. I pretty much felt fine again after this and we put it down to me being extremely dehydrated, but we can't make sense of what happened. It doesn't make sense how I got lost, so lost down there. We agreed that something was completely wrong and that we vowed never to go back there again to explore it. Now I don't know whether this house was designed like the Winchester Mystery House and some crazy person made it really confusing, but I don't understand what happened. I don't understand how I got so lost with such a simple thing to do or why I felt so drawn down there and I'm sure something was down there with me. One of my friends later on decided to go back with some of his other friends just to confirm that the place was actually there, but they could never find it. The scariest part for me is not knowing what happened to me, or how I got all of them scratches on my back, or what was at the end of that tunnel. I was camping right beside a glacier at the top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere. It was the summer but the cold air coming off the icy blue wall was amazing. Now we set up a stone wall to keep the cold air off our tents. We sat at our camp and watched a couple of mountaineers climb up it. The next afternoon we went to walk up to a waterfall and we returned to where our tents were and they're demolished. A huge chunk of ice actually fell down and hit directly where we were staying. If we had stayed there or were sleeping we'd be dead for sure. Now, I'm somebody who loved to be in the outdoors and in the wilderness generally. I grew up very close to lots of different national parks, so being out in those kinds of places never really worried me, even if I was alone for that fact. Well, part of it must be because I actually descend from somebody who spent much of their life out there, my father. He was somebody who worked as a ranger for most of his life and he absolutely loved the job. Now my story is not actually about him but I'm just trying to build up a picture of who I am and the kind of things that actually worry me or don't. So as you can imagine, it's more people that I guess I'm scared of because there's not too many things out there that I haven't encountered before. Now I have a couple of experiences and I'd like to share a few with you but I'll start with one of the most creepy and that I really can't explain. So on one particular day during the winter, I was going on a hike on my own through a national park. Now, I'd done this lots of times before and never really had too many issues with the area that I went hiking on during this specific trip. You had to be careful during the winter months because obviously you're a lot colder naturally, but it was something I really learned to deal with. Now when I set out on this particular hike, for the first day everything was completely normal and I had a really good time. When I woken up the following morning for the next day, I realised it was noticeably colder and the atmosphere felt different. The forest, I mean, wow, I don't really know how to describe it other than just absolutely scenic. The trees cast beautiful shadows whenever there was sunlight piercing through the fog, and they were very tall skinny trees that had lost many of their leaves due to the cold weather and obviously the season changing but there was a few that still stayed strong, and they actually would throughout the entire season changing. 
there was lots of orange and yellow coloured leaves around me, so it looked really cool and Halloween-y, I guess. Now, that's nothing to do with this story, but again, I just want to set the picture for you. So I quickly gathered up all of my gear and my blue tent and continue on my hike. Everything starts off as normal. I'm actually quite glad to get away from people. I spent a couple of months for college actually living in a very built up area and it really does my head in at times. Some days I walk for miles and miles just to try and get away from people but when you live in a major city it's pretty much impossible. And you often find that if you manage to get away from people you actually end up in relatively dodgy areas and it's actually quite dangerous so if you get the point you never really get your own peace of mind or moments away from people. Not that I really have a problem with people, just sometimes you need to be with yourself and I to really get in with yourself and relax. So some of these things are on my mind while I'm walking, and I'm happy that I'm probably only ever going to encounter an animal on this trip. I haven't run into somebody so far, so I'm feeling confident that it's going to remain like this for the rest of my trip. At this point I'm walking downhill now, and I have to stop to drink some water. And I realised that the fog's picked up quite a lot now. I can't really see further than, let's say, 10 or 20 metres ahead of me. It kind of looks like you're seeing the same trees because of it too, which is actually relatively disorientating, but I'm along a path where you can see lots of ATVs or similar vehicles have been. Now there's also some relatively high grass around me, which is actually very damp, and I'm actually having a problem keeping my pants dry because of this. Now it's a random point but just as a note, I'm actually wearing a camouflage jacket because A, I can't really be bothered to encounter other people and B, I think it looks cool. So this basically means if anybody's trying to watch me, they're going to have a really difficult time. That's why I'm a little off guard when I have the strange feeling that something's staring at me. It's something that I've experienced many times before, but I know it can't really be an animal because I haven't seen any for a while now and I'm fairly big, and I'm pretty sure the animals that are known in this area are going to stay well clear of me. I ignore it and just continue on, actually picking up the pace a fair bit now. At the time I do actually have a mask on for the coldness of the winter, but I'm actually struggling to breathe quite a lot now because of the fog making it very damp in my mask. I take it off and as I go down one section of a hill, I notice the fog seems to get extremely thick. I mean, this is to the point that if I was going to fall over and slide a bit, I wouldn't be able to see where I'm stopping until I'm pretty much there. Doesn't matter though, I just continue on. I notice now how the trees seem to have picked up too. A lot more lively than before, but this is actually comforting for me. I continue going downhill until eventually I'm met by more normal trees in the sense that they're full of life and leaves, and I actually feel quite good. What's good here is that in this area of the forest there doesn't seem to be any fog really. I can probably see a good 60 metres ahead of me and I feel really happy about this. That's when I notice it. There's some kind of carving on a bit of wood further up. Now no, I didn't panic and think it's a person staring back at me. And it wouldn't worry me again because my camouflage, but this is something really odd. I think maybe somebody's left it here as a joke or something, or just forgotten about it, so I head up on into the deeper part of the woods to investigate. And this is very bizarre. It appears to be about 50 years old and a complete wood carving with some faded white paint on it. I'd have to say it's from the 1950s or 60s, but it's hard to say exactly what it is. It looks like somebody's lived out here and just carved it and left it there. I pick it up thinking it's quite a cool souvenir, which I know is probably a bad idea because A, what if this thing's cursed, and B, I don't exactly know what it is. So anyway, I don't think of this at the time, and I just take my new friend with me. I managed to fit this thing onto the very top of my backpack and I strap it in so it looks like it's looking behind me. I jokingly give it a name and call it Carl and say, hey Carl, you better watch my back or I'm going to drop you off again and start laughing. Now, 
I didn't realise at the time, but it probably looked terrifying because of my camouflage. It would just appear to be a floating head on the back of somebody's body walking through the forest mist. But I probably scared a few animals, so I guess that was a plus. And I guess if any mountain lion or similar creature come, it might scare them off, but anyway, I continue on. I completely forget about the small thing that I've just found, and I'm really taken away by the beauty of this area of the forest. I'm someone who really appreciates those things, but I also appreciate how cold it's getting now, and I end up jogging for a little bit. I decide that I don't want to go too far in to the point that I get lost, and I ended up staying for a few minutes just to catch my breath again. I decide that I should take a quick nap now and set up my sleeping bag. I eventually fall asleep, not before setting the alarm for a couple of hours so I don't waste too much time. I wake up and see eyes staring back at me. I scream and then hit myself as I realise what's happened. I wake up face to face with that stupid carving that I found, forgetting it was there and wondering who was staring at me. I say, God, why did you have to scare me like that, Carl, laughing, trying to reassure myself. I'm fairly happy now because much of the fog has cleared and I can actually see much better now. I put Carl into my backpack and I continue onwards. This time he's actually in cover, so I'm not scaring anyone with my camouflage. I notice again that the trees are getting much more lively here and it actually makes me feel a lot better. While I'm walking, I hear a very loud thud against the tree. It literally sounds like a boulder being thrown into some area of the forest and a loud thump afterwards. I think this is really odd because I literally have no idea what made this sound. Worried that maybe somebody's got hurt like I don't know who. I go and investigate like an idiot. I ended up walking quite far from where I originally started and I actually get a little bit lost and can't figure out where I've come from. What's most strange though is none of the trees are disturbed whatsoever. Everything seems completely normal and I'm now sure that I've stood exactly where the sound was coming from and I can't see anything. I think maybe it was just something that is completely normal and explainable and I continue on with Carl in my bag. One strange thing though is that since this has happened my eyes keep shaking. It's almost like if you're looking through a phone camera and somebody keeps hitting the side of the phone making everything blurry for a second. It's really odd because it's something I've not experienced before and I just presumed it was dehydration. I stop and quickly start slamming my water. I continue onwards, and I notice something odd. There seems to be one more face just further up in the distance. I say, hey, we've got you a friend, jokingly, and tap my backpack, and I continue on. A little bit excited and stupidly, I jog on now, and I pick this up again. It looks exactly like the one I've already found, and I'm sure somebody's left it here for their friend. I go to reach into my backpack to make some space for it and I realise that Carl is gone. That doesn't make sense, it was in my backpack just a few minutes ago. And this one looks exactly the same, but how can that be? This can't possibly be Carl because I was literally holding him with me the whole time. I say sorry buddy, maybe it's time to just leave you here. I quickly put it back where I left it and I start jogging a bit to get away from it. Now yes, this could have easily been me, just not realising I put it down somewhere, but I don't have any memory of it. And one thing that dawns on me suddenly, which is really unexplainable, is how when I fell asleep, I woke up with that thing facing me. I 100% left it in my backpack, half tucked in, so it shouldn't have been facing me directly when I woke up. Maybe I'd moved it in my sleep, but I'd never done that before, and I was also in my sleeping bag. It's not time for me to dwell on such things and I continue forward. I'm feeling pretty unsettled now and I've noticed something really strange. Just off in the horizon, 
there appears to be an absolutely massive figure moving just off in the distance. It's as big as a tree but literally moving. I look to my left and right to make sure it's not something wrong with my eyes and look up again and sure enough there is some very tall menacing figure moving off ahead of me. I managed to convince myself that this can't be right and I just head off in the opposite direction to where I was heading. I turn around for a second to catch more glimpses of it and it's gone. This is really bizarre and something that I still can't explain. I like to think maybe it was a tree falling and that's what the sounds are but this really looked like a giant moving through the woods. It's really odd. I mean to the point that I even question my own sanity over it but I digress. Now luckily for me I make it back onto the rough area that I know. I take a right and move past a tree that appears to be shaped more like a skeleton. I think this is really odd and I stop to investigate it. What's really bizarre is this is another carving of what appears to be human remains. It's really odd, it looks like it's from much further ago than the original head that I found, almost like Native American era. It's hard to describe, this thing is clearly not old but it appears to be years old. I realise something's wrong now and I head off again try not to think of everything while not connecting dots in my head because I know it's going to make me panic. Now once again, I hear something fall, very large in the distance. Now could this be some kind of giant chasing me? I doubt it. Probably just a tree falling but that means that they're probably going to fall on me. Now common sense should prevail and I should just continue going, getting out of this forest as quick as possible, but no. The inquisitive side of me takes over, I mean hey, my dad is a ranger so that's probably natural for me. I end up going to where I think this sound is coming from and again I can't see anything. Until there's a whisper just behind me, it's just faint enough to hear but I know it was directed to me. I turn around to figure out exactly what this is and I can see somebody bent over almost praying. I call out hey and say god you scared the hell out of me, what are you doing? There's no reply. I say hey and stop myself. I have a small knife in my pocket which I now grab and say if you're hurt I can help you don't worry and I go over to investigate. My heart begins to race and I'm feeling very trembly, almost like I'm walking through quicksand. I then realise this thing is a tree. Well not a tree, some wood that's been sculpted into the shape of someone bent over praying. It's not exactly like a person but more like the outline of a person. It looks like it's been burnt too, but what's really bizarre is that none of the surroundings were charcoal or anything that you'd usually expect from a fire, so this is something else that I can't really explain. I then turn to my left to see if there's anything else when something catches my eye. Up in the top of the tree there seems to be a cross shape. Again, I don't know exactly what this is because of the fog and whatnot and I'm sure as hell not going to go up the tree. But it almost looks like the branches have been arranged too perfectly for it not to be by people. I turn back again to look at the sculpture and I realise that there's more of them. I give my eyes a few seconds to adjust and I can see 10 of them forming a circle. They're all at different heights and elevations which is pretty strange but they're all pointing towards me now. Or whoever's standing in the middle. I realise something's very odd and I get the shaking again in my eyes. I'm not sure whether this was from fear and something that I've not really experienced before but I truly don't know what to think at this point. Now, I would admit it, I felt pretty stupid at the time. Why was I getting scared by pieces of wood? I mean literally, who does that? Especially when you've got a knife and you've grew up in these areas but something was just off at this point. I decide that I need to investigate what these are and I go closer to one. 
Now this particular one seems to be slightly bigger than all of the rest and looks a little different. Upon further investigation, I realised that this actually has carvings on it. Now they're pretty hard to describe but they're more like patterns and almost like somebody was trying to form a language but didn't know how to. I then put my hand up just to fill these and there's white noise in my left ear and whispering. All I can hear is whispering. The panic makes me step back quickly and the moment I do, the whispering stops. I can hear laughing now, echoing around the trees. I know something's very wrong, and I go lightheaded again. I ended up passing out for I don't know how long, but when I woke up, it was noticeably darker again. The fog was much heavier this time, and I was very disorientated for a few seconds. I eventually get my bearings again and stand up. Now when I stood up, I realised that most of these had been moved, or rather have disappeared completely, except for one, the one that I touched with the carvings on it. This time, upon closer inspection, it looks like it's aged, almost like it's been set on fire for a second time, but it clearly hasn't been. How could it? I was right next to it and nothing's burnt on the floor around me. I realise that something is way way off and this can't all possibly be in my head. I shouted that whatever this is to leave me alone, gripping my knife. In a fit of rage I end up stabbing this stupid piece of wood and I can't withdraw the knife after the third stab. I ended up cutting my finger in fact and actually was quite concerned now so I decide that I have to leave. I have a small first aid kit with me and on the go I quickly bandage myself up, not bothering to look behind me. What the heck was that thing? What happened? I'm now dripping blood through the forest as my bandage isn't really holding up too well. It's relatively dark now and in a state of paranoia, all of the trees look like tall figures surrounding me. I don't know whether this was dehydration or a potential onset of a facial vagal reaction to losing blood, but I'm really out of it now. Maybe I hit my head when I fell down, but who knows. I continue down and I really feel like I'm in hell. I've never experienced dying as I'm sure most people haven't, but I'm sure this is what it feels like. As I walk down the path, the trees seem to reflect off the ground below me and it seems like I'm walking into internal blackness with no way out. It seems like the trees are impossibly tall and the fog is impossibly thick and crazily dark. I know I have to keep walking off in a direction but I really hope I don't end up lost. I mean god, maybe my dad will have to save me. I can't have that. Not his son. I decide I must keep on taking steps forwards. This time I have no bearings or general sense of direction. I stupidly feel safer in the darker side of the trees, hoping my camo can do its job. I take a moment to look behind me, and I don't see anything luckily. I was certain that those weird sculpture things were going to start appearing again, or maybe I would see something walking, but there's nothing. I continue down, and I realise it is getting very dark. I do have a way to communicate, and I quickly pull out my phone but there's no service. What's worse is the battery dies after a few minutes because of the damp. I now realise that I'm probably going to have to camp out here alone, but where? Where's safe now? I'm also very worried about my cart getting infected and it's never going to stay dry because of the fog and the dampness, but with the darkness that is onset, I don't really have a choice. I can see a general clearing that I can go and set up camping, but I decide I should actually try and hide now. I go near a fallen tree and set up a small tarp, and make sure that I'm very well hidden. I keep all of my camo gear on, and then I black out. I can remember waking up the following morning to not a bright sunny day, but fog, everywhere. But it's not as bad this time. I actually feel much better now, 
and thankfully my sleep was entirely uneventful. My bandage is completely saturated now and I have to change it over to my last one and I continue until eventually I find a path that I know should lead me back to civilization. I can see the sun slightly penetrating through the trees which is actually reassuring. But then, I can hear it, the sound of something large falling again, just very far off this time. I have some comfort in knowing that I must have got a long way from where I started but not in the sense that I don't know where I'm going now. I feel trapped and panic until eventually I can see a road. I ended up sprinting towards it and screaming, trying to get cars to stop but the first one doesn't. I must have looked like an absolute maniac, especially wearing my camouflage and I've realised that I need to calm down. I glance over my shoulder once again and I can see a very tall outline of a figure with stick legs staring at me. I take a second before I realise that it's just a tree and I say God and slap myself to try and snap out of it. Eventually another car comes past and I'm able to flag them down. They say God, are you okay? What happened? How long have you been out there? Clearly concerned by the way that I appear, but I tell them not to worry. Nothing happened, I'm fine, I've just ran out of supplies, and they eventually agree to take me over to the next town. I end up staying there in a hotel for the night, and eventually catch a ride to go and get my car, and drive out of there. I eventually make it back to safety and I tell my dad about what had happened because I don't know who else to talk to. I know for a fact that he's probably the only one that's going to believe me. And what my dad said really chilled me to the bone. He's heard stories from other rangers about when they've been on patrols or whatnot and have stumbled into ancient Native American artifacts and whatnot and emphasise the importance of never touching them or playing with them. Yeah, thanks dad. I definitely needed to learn that one right now from you. But he says don't worry about it, and he doesn't doubt for a second what I saw. He says even he's seen some tall things walking off in the distance that almost appear like giant creatures or large pencils. But he just puts it down to not knowing what's out there in the woods, and I guess that's true in a sense. We really don't know what's out there or in the woods and I think there's some things that it's best not knowing or disturbing. I just wish I hadn't have been so stupid in the fact that I'd messed around with whatever I found out there and I always knew for the future and even to this day that I must respect the forest and nature because we live there but we don't own it and it's very easy for us to forget that at times. Please don't make the same mistake that I did. So I was solo camping and was on a hike to my favourite spot. I saw what appeared to be a man holding a massive rock in one hand and a knife in the other facing me. It's pretty weird but other bushcrafters have been known to set up camp there too. I hit him with a standard hey man and wave. I get a bit closer and it looks like it was just a rock. So I laughed it off and turned around and start walking away. A rock then whizzed by my right ear, fast enough and big enough to really hurt me if it hit me. I turned around to see where the rock had come from, and the figure I'd seen wasn't standing there anymore. A few years back, I went camping with two buddies in the mountains near Lake Tahoe. We hiked about two hours with our packs to a small lake and set up camp. All was normal during the day. We made some hot dogs and beans and then stayed up until it was dark to watch the stars. Once it was dark out, we hiked up to the top of a large boulder to get a vantage point to see the stars over the trees. I recalled that there was no moon now that night because we could see the stars so clearly due to the limited ambient light and we're pretty far out so there's no background noises or lights from humans. Once our eyes are adjusted after an hour and a half or so, we could see all the stars and even some satellites slowly moving across the sky. So no, it's very dark out with no moon, which is going to be important later. So 
After a couple of hours of stargazing, we head down to our tents and set up right by the lake. We have a two person tent for the three of us. Now my two friends shared one tent and I was alone in another one. We set up tents right next to each other on top of the same flat spot. I fell asleep relatively easily because I was tired from hiking and exploring all day and because it was so dark. I like sleeping in the dark though. However, at about 3 or 4am, I wake up to a rustling on the side of my tent. I'm half asleep and dazed. I'm not sure if it's just the wind or something. I keep listening and realise that something is brushing against the side of my tent and it sounds like a large animal pushing its nose up against it, sniffing. The sound is coming from the side of my tent right next to my head so I can hear it super clearly. At this point my heart's racing and I'm lying frozen in my sleeping bag hoping that whatever it is outside will leave me alone. I think about calling out to my friends in their tent but I don't want to startle or anger whatever is outside so I decide just to keep lying still hoping it will leave. My mind is going through every possibility and then I realise what it is. We set up our tents earlier in the day and there wasn't much flat space so we put up our tents close to each other. Evidently, they were so close that when my friend was moving his feet in the sleeping bag, it brushed up against the tent next to my head. So all along it was my friends moving around, view. However, the weird stuff doesn't really stop there and I realised that this next part was weird once we had left the next day and I'd gone home. As I laid in my tent and tried to slow my heart after realising the rustling was my friend, I was looking at the shadows of the trees on the walls of my tent. They reminded me of when I was younger and cars would slowly drive down the street and the headlights would go through the blinds. At the time it made sense to me and I thought it was just like when I was a kid. Now considering I just thought a creature was outside my tent, this doesn't seem wrong. However, as I mentioned earlier, it was a dark and moonless night, so what could the light have been? It was a very slow moving drawing light that had the shadows of the trees moving slowly across the walls of my tent for about 5 minutes. By the way, we're miles away from civilization so it was no car or flashlight, and it was moving very steadily. It could have been a flare in the sky or maybe a comet in the darkness. I still don't know what it could have been but I only ever realised after I'd left the campsite and didn't put my head out to investigate at the time. Now when I was young, like maybe 9 or 10, my cousin and I were walking down behind my grandparents house and at the edge of the woods to where their pig pen is. The black fence borders the woods and was heavily overgrown with bushes. Now there was a small path that had a worn out and very small clearing where some chairs had been placed. It was kind of like a natural clubhouse. Once you're in that tiny clearing, you couldn't see in or out of it. Now we were walking down the little path and just before we get there into the clearing, we could see some adult sitting in one of the chairs, kind of leaned over with his hands on his head. I turned around and ran over to my cousin to get out of there. She ran behind me asking what was wrong. I don't stop running until I get back to my grandparents house and I told my grandpa about what was there. And we went back down to investigate but the man's gone. The thing is, even at that age, I knew that I had to duck down and get out of the clearing. Now what's weird was that a fully grown adult would have had to crawl on his hands and knees to get in or out of that area. I had no idea how anybody noticed where the path was because it was so discreet. I don't know how he was able to get out of there too. I'm 46 now and still think of it to this day. There's been lots of creepy and weird stuff that occurred over at the Heath. I'll tell you about this because it was the strongest worst feeling that L and I had ever experienced together at the same time. It was one of the most sinister, menacing sensations I've ever felt. I say this coming from a family of sensitives who had paranormal and supernatural experiences all my life. When we were seven, Mama took Cousin L and I over Hounslow Heath 
for our usual adventures that were common in the summer holidays. Instead of the regular route, we used to love collecting feathers and other natural things that we found to make collages with, or picking fat juicy berries and whatnot off bushes and these would be given to our grand to make pies with. Now mama took us to one of her old haunts as a child called Paradise. Paradise was thought to have been the location of either an old coaching inn or a power mill, and was just very stark bare massive open fields with skeletal remains of ancient looking stones and wooden buildings and very old wooden tree stumps that are scattered everywhere throughout the area. Over the years, Paradise had fallen victim to attacks of arson, and the local council burning the field to keep it from being overgrown and unmanaged, so the appearance of Paradise was somewhat desolate and bleak due to the burnt grass and whatnot. The obvious difference between the otherwise lush and green area around Paradise and Paradise itself was clear to El and I, and immediately, we both actually say the same thing about Paradise, calling it the burnt place. We felt very uneasy, and I can tell you that El and I couldn't stop staring at it. Now you know the feeling when you grow up with somebody, and you don't have to say anything, you feel the same? Well, we had that. Now I was in my wheelchair investigating the ground around me, and L was a little bit further off. Mama was looking at something else. Suddenly, L looked up at me and said, Shiv, can you hear anything? I was suddenly struck by the silence of the area. Normally, Heath would actually be alive with the comforting sound of birds and small insects and whatnot. It was a constant soundtrack playing, but there's no sound. Nor come to mention that there was no evidence of any living things. In fact, I didn't see any birds at all. I said this to L, and we both looked to the sky before continuing our investigation of the burnt ground and its remains. Looking carefully, I come to an awful realization that the ground's actually scattered with lots of small animal skeletal bones and skulls charged that have been there for years. We both look over at each other and say, can we go please? My mum looks at both of us and laughs. We then tell her about the animals and the silence and everything there. My mum just explained that it was only to be expected from a dead area. But she didn't say much about the silence and she just said, okay, let's go back. When we got home, we told our grandma about it and we talked about it all night. Now we're adults and Azelle has her own children. They ask us about our childhood and sometimes we tell them about this story, but something about the silence of it I really can't explain and it truly scares me. It was really like being in hell. Now I've had a lot of weird experiences while hiking in the forest before, but there was one that really took the cake for me. I was due to go hiking with a group of friends, but it started raining heavily, and most of my friends had actually backed out of it, but I wasn't going to stop. So, I decided that I'm going to go on with the two friends that will go with me, Ben and Ryan. These are brothers who have always been really cool to me, and we were all good friends, so this is great. Now before we started, there was a huge puddle that we had to go around, and funnily, my friends started trying to push each other in before we actually got across the thing, and myself included. Ryan fell in, which we all thought was really funny, but it wasn't really I guess because he was going to get cold, so we actually have to head back just to change clothes and go again. Now I guess that's how it is with friends and brothers, but hey, we're having a good time. Now as we get into the first part of the hike, there's a very big stream and we're actually daring each other to go across it thinking it's going to be really funny knowing one of us would probably fall in, but even our own stupidity had limits and we weren't going to go into that stream. We know if we fell in we probably weren't going to come out again, so we decide that we should just go on the normal path. Now it's extremely slippery and we're all being careful not to fall because there's almost a stream of rain below our feet. Now, we end up making it into a relatively dry area. There's lots of dead leaves on the floor so it's very slushy. It means we can hear each other really well. 
but it is extremely slippery so we have to be careful not to fall in. Now we can see the odd jogger or two while we're out here. Now there's two who are wearing blue jackets but they ended up jogging straight past us. We're actually quite annoyed because they've splashed a lot of water on us in the process but they say sorry. Now we continue on our hike and make it into a much deeper part of the forest. We're actually trying to get in further so we can get under some trees now. As we do so, we notice there's one more jogger that goes past, but it's actually quite hard to differentiate the exact direction they're going in. Because it's odd, they seem to be going straight through the trees and not on a path, but hey, we can't be bothered to investigate. We eventually come across another stream where there's a rock, and we have to jump on the rock before jumping across the stream. We all make it across intact, but... Ryan tries to block his brother from getting across last minute and it's actually really funny. But we all make it across in one piece. Now why we were out here in the rain I don't really know to be honest but it has no signs of stopping now. Ryan suddenly spots out, do you think the jogger's lost? I keep seeing him going past and I jokingly say no, it's a bear Ryan, don't worry it's just coming to eat us, it's not lost, you haven't got to help it and we continue on. Now none of us really raised an eyebrow at it at the time. The rain eventually stops and we're very relieved about this. Now Ryan goes ahead of me into the darker part of the forest and me and my other friend just stop to have a small discussion for a couple of minutes and try and dry off our socks. We can then hear Ryan talking and say hey yeah we're gonna be there in a minute just wait for us come on. We gotta dry off our socks. Then we realise that he's not actually talking to us. We can then see a jogger sprinting off and we just assume that maybe he's had to tell him directions and don't think anything of it. We then catch up with Ryan and he doesn't say a word to us. Ben says, hey what's up bro? And he says, something about that guy was just off. We all look at each other confused and Ryan says, there was something about the way he smiled at me that was really strange. We then say, well, what did you talk about? And he said, well, he just smiled at me. And I just pointed and said, that's the way you need to get out of here. He didn't say anything, then just sprinted off. Now, me and Ben both started bursting out laughing, saying, yeah, yeah, definitely. And he says, no, seriously. And we kind of just laugh it off and say it's probably nothing, just somebody lost out here. We continue on in our hike and the rain's completely stopped. We're happy about this because it was drizzling from the trees on us before. We're walking quite a weird path now because we have to constantly avoid puddles. We do this for about a good hour before we decide it's probably time to head back. We end up coming across a weird thing though on our walk. There appears to be a tree that's positioned perfectly in front of us to make us go down another area. We think this is odd because it literally looks like somebody's done this on purpose but there's no one around to have done it, but it seems to be freshly laid. Even parts of underneath it are still dry. We think this is odd and dare each other to go down the path first. I felt more brave at the time so volunteer myself. As I do so, I have a strange feeling that we shouldn't have done this, and I turn around to Ryan who looks at me to confirm the same thing. As I'm walking, there's a large splash next to me, and I turn around and say hey don't do that, and suddenly a stone hits my friend Ben. For a split second we think it's Ryan but we realise it can't be because he's right next to us. We stop for a second and realise that somebody's throwing stones at us now and we can't figure out where it's coming from. We look at each other kind of as if to say what the hell is that? We quickly arm ourselves with rocks in case we can throw it back but we literally had no idea where they come from. It's really strange because nobody in their right mind would be throwing rocks at people. I mean, hell, we're going to beat them up if we can catch them, we know that for sure. And we continue on. Now, as we're walking, we 
catch just off to our right something moving quickly through the trees. Ryan then screams out, God, that's him, the one I told you about earlier, quick, quick, quick. And he stupidly throws a stone at him, and he stops and stares at us. Now, I'll never forget the stare that he did. This person literally looks like a zombie. His face is almost completely white. His teeth are yellow to contrast it, and his eyes seem too far sunk into his head. He's wearing a weird dark kind of uniform that's hard to describe. It looks like robes, but kind of greenish tinges around the edges, if that makes sense. He doesn't say a word. The next thing we know, we can hear an absolutely horrifying scream sound coming from him. It sounds too loud to be human. Now what happened next, I can only describe as I saw it, and it's something I don't question because the other two saw the same thing. Now whatever this he, she is, it seemingly floats the next two meters down towards us. Yes, float. Not walking over the rocks, but floating. Yeah, they could have been walking weirdly and tiptoeing through the rocks, but I swear to you this was almost like they were floating with a dark robe covering their feet, still letting out that horrifying screaming sound towards us, only now smiling. As you can imagine, that was our cue to get out of there. Luckily all of us are relatively fit, so we actually managed to go quite a good jog in a U-turn kind of shape. We make it onto the path that we've come from, and none of us bothered looking behind us. We have to run and jump over a stream, and Ben hilariously but terrifyingly falls in. We quickly drag him up, because it's very dangerous, because if he falls down he could literally get carried away into a stream. We then turn back and realise that this thing is just off in the tree line slowly coming towards us still, but no longer screaming. None of us say a word to each other and we just say we have to get back, we have to get back out of here. We continue jogging through the trees for another good 10 minutes. We look behind us periodically but don't see anything. We continue up until eventually we make it back to the main road. We all quickly jump into Ben's car and he speeds out of there, not going at a reasonable speed. I keep looking around in the passenger seat, hoping this thing doesn't appear. I glare out of the window and I can't see it. We eventually make it back to the safety of my house and we don't bother telling my parents what happened. But luckily Ben, who's older than us at the time, makes a phone call and informs the police about what happened and they say they're going to investigate. I think the best case scenario is it's a crazy person that's out there just trying to scare people, but worse, I don't really know what it could have been. If it was just myself that day, I would have doubted it, but all of us saw the exact same thing. I don't know what you guys think of it, but it's an experience that's never been able to leave me. What really caught me is the way it moved, just not normal, not natural at all. Something about this whole situation was very wrong and off. Hello everyone. Now, I'd like to say that I'm from Scandinavia, so my story might be a little different than some of the ones you're used to hearing of rangers, but I can't really explain what I saw, and I'd like to get you guys' thoughts on it too. I'm from Sweden, so I've really been blessed with some beautiful scenery. A lot of people presume that it would actually become normal to me, but it hasn't whatsoever. I've been to all the Nordic countries, and my particular favourites are Norway and Sweden. A lot of our scenery is similar too, just with varying mountainscapes and whatnot, but the weather is usually consistently the same in terms of coldness during the colder months, and beautiful summer days during the summer. Now, I'm somebody who had often done solo hiking through an area close to where I live. I'd done this a couple of times with my friends and then dad, but usually on my own, and in one particular day I set off like normal on my own. To do this I have to catch a bus ride. Now when I get on the bus there's not too many people on there, just myself for much of the journey until eventually what appears to be a sweet old lady gets on the bus. When she gets on the bus, 
she does seem to stare at me quite a lot, which I think is really odd. Now, there's something about her eyes that look pretty off, and this continues on and off for the whole half hour journey until I eventually get off and thank the driver. What I think is really strange is the way that she continues staring at me even as the bus goes off. I don't know, maybe she thinks I've done something wrong or I look like somebody who was bad to her in the past, but I don't know, I just think it is pretty odd. But that's not my story. Now when I get to the area I usually go hiking in, I'm very glad because it's completely empty now and there's no signs of other hikers whatsoever. And the trees are absolutely beautiful and dwarf me. I can see some of the insects too, which is actually nice for me because I have a passion for life and outdoors creatures. Now, there was lots of forest scrubs around and small bushes and plants everywhere which made for very pleasant walking. Now the first part of my hike actually goes really well and I continue drinking my water ensuring that I stay hydrated. Now I have to be careful in one particular area because the hill is very steep and if I were to fall, I don't know how long it would take until I reach the bottom. I mean heck, that's if I ever do. Now I make it through one area and come over to a hill. Now what's interesting about this particular area is there's lots of red or orange coloured plants which I find really beautiful. You do find in these particular areas though that you have to constantly look at the ground. There's lots of rocks on the path and if you're not careful you can really easily go over one. I take a moment to stop and admire the beauty of the place when a hiker comes past saying hey, hey did you see that thing? I say hey what's wrong, he says that thing in the sky is crazy. I think yeah this guy's clearly off his head and I just let him go off on his own. He continues talking saying it's crazy the thing in the sky. Like he's carrying on the conversation with me but I'm not there. I don't let it bother me too much though and I continue on. I can see a beautiful lake not far off from where I'm sitting and a mountainscape just behind it. This is truly beautiful and I take in some time to admire it and finish off the rest of my tea before I continue onwards. Now on this particular hike my plan was never actually to stay the night but to head back because I have some homework I have to do when I get in, so I'm constantly present and being careful of my time. Now when I glance down at my watch, the time seems to be going very quickly, and that's always a sign that you're enjoying yourself, right? So I continue onwards. Up ahead of me, I can see a small hilltop. Maybe it's a mountain range, I don't really know how to describe it for you. But there's trees up on both sides of it and I think, God, wouldn't it be great if I could make it to the top of that thing? There is a path you can take to get there, but it's relatively dangerous. I stop for a moment to decide what to do, and I realise there's a spider on my shoelace. I absolutely hate these things, so I kick it off quickly and end up jogging a bit. It's unlikely, but I'm worried that I've just sat on a bunch of them, so I think the best thing to do is keep moving. While I've got this momentum going, I decide that I'm going to go up the hill. Now if I fall I'm really going to be in trouble because the rock face is actually relatively sheer and there's lots and lots of different rocks which are relatively loose so it basically means if I go off the side I'm not really in luck. So I have to be very careful at this time. Now while I'm walking I can see more of the red coloured plants that I really like. I'm probably about two hours off getting to the top of this thing and I decide that yeah I'm gonna go for it. It's not really the best of ideas but I go for it. I eventually make it towards the top and my god the view is absolutely beautiful. I decide that I should just wait here and watch the sunset. I wait for a couple of minutes and I can't figure out where the sun is. I then embarrassingly and stupidly realise that the sun's already set and my incredible self didn't realise that it had and I was waiting here getting cold. I now realise that it's time to head back home and I turn to leave. Just as I do so, I see a flashing light out of the corner of my eye. I rub my eye for a second thinking that maybe something's hit it like a stone that I haven't realised from somewhere higher up than where I am currently but I realise that's not possible. 
I then see a blue flashing light in the sky. Now, this thing was much brighter than anything else I've ever seen before. It's almost impossibly bright. And what's one beam seems to become two, then three. They start hovering up and down and seem to be closing in to where I am. Now, I haven't taken any drugs or anything. I never have. But I know I shouldn't be seeing this. I consider maybe there's something wrong with my eye and look away, then back again and I realise that the lights are coming closer. I decide to jog down the hill as quick as possible trying to get away from these things. As I'm jogging, I can see another one of those just up to the right seemingly landing on top of the hill. I stop for a moment in absolute amazement as what appears to be two very tall figures come out of it and stand staring at me until the light vanishes, but they don't. I turn around and the other lights have gone, but I can still see those giant figures on top of the hill, and when I say giant I mean they must have been at least 12 feet tall and they're very tall stick-like creatures. That's not really a good situation, I say to myself. They then turn round and go down the side of the hill. Oh boy, this isn't good. They're going towards the exit that I need to go to, and God knows if there's more of these things. I ended up jogging back down the hill as quick as I possibly can, doing my best Usain Bolt impression. I stupidly don't look where I'm going and ended up falling over completely, luckily catching myself in a small tree. It hurt like heck, and there was actually spiders on me which I probably hated more than anything. It actually made me worry so much I forgot about those tall things. I ended up doing a light jog until eventually I make it back to the bus stop. Now there's no sign of anyone, until I suddenly see that crazy guy again going off down another area of the hill, and it suddenly hits me. Whatever that guy must have seen, I've seen too, and I suddenly remember the tall figures again. I'm completely shaken up by this experience, and I speak to the bus driver when the bus eventually comes, constantly looking behind me saying, God, you've got to tell me you saw that thing too. He confirms to me that he did have reports from other bus drivers seeing strange things in the sky, also describing the blue flashy lights. I ended up racing home and reporting it to my mum. We looked all over the internet, all over the news, expecting to see some kind of alien invasion of Earth, but nothing. Not a drop of information related to what I had seen that day. Now, I really don't know what to think. I don't want to sound like one of those crazy UFO guys that you see on the TV, but I know exactly what I saw. I saw two weird creatures come out of one of the craft things, or lights, whatever it was, and the other people saw this too. But how can that be? It doesn't make any logical sense. I don't really want to say it was aliens, but I don't know what to make of it. I was actually so shaken up from this experience that I've never went solo hiking again since. Now I'm not much of a hunter, but when I was a teenager, I was always friends with stoners in high school, even though I wasn't one myself, and we'd always find the weirdest things to do. We lived in rural Mississippi, which I promise is not as horribly redneck as it seems, but we always heard the stories of the backward Satan church cult, you know, that whole legend that I guess you really hear a lot of when you're younger. So regardless. We actually got a lead once from one of our friends who used to go and smoke and fornicate at this particular spot in the middle of nowhere. They said they come across some weird animal skins and saw some people in weird garb walking around. So of course, we're going to check it out. Our friends wouldn't go with us so it was me and two girls and three guys. We drove out to the nearest trowel and parked way out in the woods. Me and one of the other guys, along with one of the ladies, were a little chicken, worried about finding something cool for, and we decided that we're going to hike with our friends. After a good 10 minutes of walking blind through the woods, we can actually hear moans and screams. We've come across dead animals. It looked like some sicko hunters were just being disgusting with the animals, 
and actually throwing their heads and whatnot around. They were mostly deer, but we found dogs even. This was more than enough for one of us to actually go back into the car. Of course, we ended up sitting in the car smoking cigarettes and just messing around until one of our friends returned. When they did come back, they were exhausted and had been running. Now, this was also before cell phones were capable of documenting everything and none of us cared to bring one because we didn't have a decent camera on our one. All we got was a piece of cloth that my friend ripped off something. Anyways, when they get back to the car, they sped away and they drove us to our usual hangout spot and tell us what happened. They had walked for a good while and found this makeshift church with more dead animals everywhere. Apparently there was all kinds of symbols around and whatnot on it. They also heard awful noises, but my friend grabbed some scraps from one of the burnt areas of the building. It was one of the black jackets that our friend told us about stuck to the ground, like somebody had been pinned there before. The whole thing was weird and I didn't see it for myself, but I did see the animals, whether it be the sickos or hunters, but there really was a satanic church or something. The forest creeps me out to this day. Among other good stories, I have this one, but it really freaks me out. Now I've got two experiences really. The first happened when I was around 15 and was hunting squirrel in early October. It was a pretty cool day and I was walking along in a hollow I'd hunted a few days prior and had been there quite a few times looking at squirrels and whatnot. As I walked deeper into this hollow, I started seeing more and more squirrels and bagged a couple. As I'm watching a couple move around in the trees, waiting for one of them to stop on an open branch so I can take a shot at it, I'm totally focused on the two little animals jumping around and not paying much mind to anything else. Well suddenly, the squirrels, all six or seven I count, immediately disappear. Now this was weird enough in itself, since they all collectively made alarm barks, and then went silent and were nowhere to be seen. But what happened in the coming minutes has stayed with me for years. I stood looking around for any signs of squirrels, and I hear a loud crashing sound to my right. As I stood there, a figure emerges from the trees, the figure's walking on two legs and had a rather large frame. I think maybe it's my father when I saw it as he was hunting with me that day. I realised that it was far too tall and not wearing any visible hat though. I looked for a good while at the form of it and I decide it's a good idea to go a bit higher. Now based on the behaviour, I don't really know what to think of this. At first I was looking at what appeared to be a lost person slowly scanning all the trees, looking for some signs or something. But second, it remained on its hind legs and appeared to be far too comfortable on them, not even showing difficulty as it made its way down to the side of the ridge, unlike any bear I've seen. Now lastly, its form was, well, too human for it not to be a very large man. But I began to wonder, is this actually a person and call out hello? And god, this lets out a horrible streaking sound. 4. I call out for it again, but it bolts now, far quicker than anything I've ever seen run before. And its movement was truly graceful, which I found chilling. Now, how easily large this thing was running was really weird. It gone immediately to my 2 o'clock. It made me fear this thing, whatever it was, knowing it could easily hunt me down and capture me if it wanted. I quickly left the area and have only returned once since, this time during deer season and without my knowledge of where we'd end up. The second experience was when I was walking with my dog out in the field near my home. We both heard a bellowing roar from something I can't identify. The closest thing I can say about this is if you mixed a bear, wolf and tiger. It was so terrifying that my dog immediately went to his house in the yard and stayed there the rest of the night. Now I come from a big country family. We live on a farm. We raised our own food and animal meats. And we hunt and process. 
My father's cousin is even a licensed taxidermist, so we get a lot of hunting in. For a bit of backstory, on the homestead I grew up on and still live in, it was my parents, my pop's first cousin and his wife. Also his four sisters are there, and my four female second cousins, so four adults and nine kids. And sometimes my pop's brother actually comes over to stay with us especially when the hunting season is starting up. So hunting season, which is deer hunting, is going on. And my pops and his brother and his cousin we live with are all getting ready to go hunting. And some of us decide to tag along with him, being me, my sister and cousin. And we go further into the woods than we normally do and set up camp, etc. Now, an important fact is that during the time we're setting up, my dad and uncles are being quiet while the kids are talking, and my voice hasn't changed. This is important. Now, us kids keep chattering away, while the adults are just letting us get our energy out while they check the survival equipment, making sure the guns are clean and working, etc. There's a rustling in the thick brush around us, and suddenly, three creepy looking guys enter the clearing. They stop dead. One of them has a hand on his knife on a belt, and they're clearly drunk as anything. They keep looking at A and S and my pops and uncles like they're debating something. My pops and uncles stand up. Last bit of backstory, every guy in my family is huge. I'm 19 now and I'm 6 foot 5. My dad is 6 foot 10, 280. Just a deeply intimidating man. And so are my uncles K and B. The guys laugh nervously as my uncle picks up one of the freshly cleaned rifles and points it at them. These do start running out the clearing like the devil's after them. My pots immediately says we're clearing out. My uncle doesn't question it and neither do we, kids. We're freaking out and totally take things down sloppy, but my pops doesn't say anything about messing up the equipment. We get back into cell service and my dad calls the cops about seeing those creepy people, but the cops don't seem to think anything of it. At that moment I realised A, S and me, with my voice unchanged, were the only ones those guys would have heard, so they thought they'd come across the camp with three people by themselves. I live in southern Spain, near some really ancient forest called Los Alcarones, which is some kind of trees that are almost extinct and only grow over there and in one or two other places. It's a bit of a rocky terrain, and if you like walking onto the forest and trying to climb some rocks, you should be careful because usually you can have caves and hollow spaces under your feet that you can really easily fall into. So my father and his friend usually go hiking on Thursdays so they don't find anyone in the woods, besides maybe a shepherd or forest worker. And on this day, they decide to climb a really large and rocky hill. My uncle Frank remembered that when he was young, he slept on a little cave when he was hunting and got lost, and he wanted to try and find it again. After a few hours they find the cave, the cave itself is covered in moss and grime, but it was surely the same cave. One of my father's friends, John, tried to get as far as possible into the cave because he was in really good shape and wants to see all of it. The rest of them decide to wait outside. Now suddenly, John starts screaming and calling for my father. He went inside and turned on his torch, and inside the cave was a really weird shrine or something like that with candles, apples, bones and charcoal and ashes, a pair of gloves, a pot and a pan. Everything looks really old and dusty like it's been there for a long time. My father went to the shrine and it had a little bowl and in it appeared to be human teeth. When they got out they packed up all of their things and go really quickly. My father actually refuses to hike around there anymore and they start hiking on the other side of the hill and into the woods. Now I was respecting in the outback of Queensland one day, 
and I'm around 100k from anywhere and the sun is beginning to set. I am setting up camp via Big Lepong when something catches my eye up in the ghost gum by my tent, about 30 feet up in the crook of two branches as a tray. On the tray there appears to be a full bottle of red wine and a glass. It's perfectly balanced like it's been placed there for me. The base of the tree was about 3 meters wide without a branch, knot or handhold all the way up to the tree. So I never got close to work out why or how it got up there. I live in northeast America, in a pretty rural place with lots of hills, not too many neighbours and a lot of forest. Just tonight I was heading somewhere with my mother down our backyard which is pretty large and relatively clear for about 100 foot, then switched to some woods. Now we're about 30 foot before the woods when I catch a sight of some eyes reflecting in my headlamp. They're a good 50 to 100 feet away and I assume they're just ears. There's a couple of things that convince me however that they might not be just deer. Around where I live, deer will run away if you make enough noise and we were talking pretty loud but the eyes don't move. They were staring directly at us and continue to do so, which is incredibly unlike deer. On top of that, the pair of eyes on the right are very low to the ground and very wide, too far apart to be a deer, more something predatory and big. We stood for a minute remarking on them, and neither pair of eyes looked away. So since we were spooked, we headed back up to the house, got my brother a machete, a bat and a metal pole, and head down. I expected the eyes to be gone by that point, but no. They were still there in slightly different spots. But not much further from where they'd been previously. They just stared as steadily as though they'd been there forever, and we retreat back. The logical answer is a deer, but the lack of running away, the heights and the intense stare, almost feels like it couldn't possibly be deers. Now it could be wild dogs, but we don't really have them here. It's possibly a black bear, but they're notoriously scared of people. A few years ago, in the northern parts of Sweden, I'm going out for a very nice evening of fishing. I am what I guess is called a fishing supervisor. I check that the other fishermen get their licenses in a certain area of lakes and streams. This is in late summer, so I've been doing my round, which is usually ending up with going to a small lake and fly fishing for some trout. Now this lake or pond is pretty deep in the forest and I rarely see anybody out here. Actually, I've never met anyone here. The lake looks like a crater, a perfectly round circle that's perhaps 100 meters in diameter. It contains a natural population of perch and trout. It's a summer evening with a light breeze. The birds are chirping and the fish is rising to all the insects spawning on the surface. I rig my gear and aim for one of the fish rising near the right of me. The second as my fly lands onto the surface, it's like somebody pauses time. The sun hides behind a cloud, the wind stops blowing and the birds are suddenly silent and the fish stop eating. A smell rises from the ground that I'm standing on, like something dead and rotten. It's almost like there's a carcass really far under my feet. It's like there's a carcass under my feet. Now all of a sudden I'm aware that there is something walking out of the forest maybe like 15 or 10 meters behind me. It's like I can see it in the corner of my eye, but I still really can't see it, and every hair on my body stands on end. It suddenly becomes very cold all around me. The thing watching me just stands there, and I don't have the courage to turn around at all. I see my fly sink to the bottom, but I can't move. I can't do anything. I don't dare to. Then suddenly the wind hits me, and it carries away the awful smell, and the sun shines again and hits me. The birds are now singing again, and the forest comes back to life. I turn around and nothing's there. So on the lake I start fishing again. I pack my gear and throw the backpack on my back and run for it, through the forest to my car. I hit the gas and drive like a maniac until I find the big road and civilization once again. 
I park at the side of the road and say to myself, what was that? And I haven't been there since. I'm a wildland fighter in the US. I fought fires all over the Northwest, Eastern Rockies, Midwest forest, and the only thing that's ever thrown me off was fighting fires in the mountains of any Wyoming, BLM land of east of Yellowstone, hiking into a valley recently burnt that was just eerie. Smoke can make that a norm, but the colors were so vibrant. Even after being touched by fire, most of the trees and shrubs were unburned, which is very rare or almost impossible. Now within a few steps of entering the base of the valley, I knew the details I like could live there my whole life, like deja vu, but with a clarity of reality and not a momentary second but 20 minutes and 100 yards of hiking. To be clear, this was a place I'd never stopped in before and I was hiking paths that were very familiar to me as a brother. Trees I knew had scars opposite of me 20 yards away, stones that I knew were going to be warm, almost hot to touch really, perched inches from an ice cold stream. Before I turned corners I knew about a rock shelf that was protecting a small pool with a lush green patch of grass the size of a small room with untouched trees. Now, I stayed there for a moment, but it felt like an hour. The whole time my hair stood off on the back of my neck, and I felt like I was visiting my favorite place in the world. Now anyway, I finished scouting the valley and went back with my crew to move on. I kept saying to myself that I don't know how to explain this perfect place and I wanna leave it for myself. It still shocked me to this day. I have no way to rationalise exactly why it was so perfect despite the massive fires everywhere else. To this day, four years and countless fires later, I've never experienced anything like it, and it's likely the only place that I've ever desired beyond to any to return again. It just seemed too perfect and out of this world. A long time ago, a few friends and I decided to go camping. We live in a rural area, so we just pick a random stretch of woods that wasn't around someone's home. We're talking really rural, like cornfields on both sides a few miles apart, and then nothing but uninterrupted empty forests until you hit the road, which is a long way off. We hiked about three miles in before we made camp. Later on in the middle of the night, we got freaked out and decided that camping in a random forest isn't good, so we hike probably five miles back to the road because we somehow got into one of the cornfields and those absolutely suck. Miles of roads where you can't see anything and not being able to see your friends to your left or right really scares you. Now not to mention that the reason we decided to go back to the car in the first place is because we heard random rustling around us the whole night which followed us until the last 20 feet before the road. Now that's not the scariest part. The next day when we went back to get our stuff, now in the day the forests are a lot better really so it was a nice walk and we start walking and talking a bit. During that one of us yelled Marco and unfortunately somebody answered. Like I said, much less creepy in the daytime. Now feeling comfortable we kept playing and tried to find out the presumed hunter or hiker who was messing with us. Eventually. We realise that this never stops, and we don't know the direction that it actually comes in, so we keep heading out eventually, not thinking more of it, until one of my friends decides to do it again, and we get replies. We end up following it until we get to an old, mostly crumbled barbed wire fence surrounding the foundation of a house that used to be there. This was not uncommon in the forest where I grew up. There were lots of houses that had been built and then neglected when their owners sold their land to farmers and moved away, but the fact that playing Marco Polo with an apparent disembodied voice had led us to this weird place. Our tent was still in the forest but we decided to leave it there. Now I like to look for new, out of the way fishing holes. If I'm on a trip and I have my gear, I'll pull up a map, look at different connecting waterways and try and find back roads that may lead to spots that few people know about. 
On one particular trip about 10 years ago, I'm in Western PA and looking for a road to connect me with this small and out of the way stream that I found on the map. I'm in the country and it's not too desolate, but houses are definitely getting few and far between and it's looking more and more beat up. I summarise that I'm really close to where this stream is supposed to be, so I turn down a dirt road. It leads towards a tree line in the direction that I believe the stream is in. The road starts out okay, but as soon as I pass into the tree line stuff, things get weird. It's mid afternoon, but the canopy of the tree is so thick that it suddenly looks like dusk. Then the road becomes very, very dodgy quick, starting to close in and then vanishes. There are banks on either side of me, so I feel like I'm on some sort of old logging road that rarely ever gets vehicles on it. The road is getting worse and worse. Large rocks starting to appear randomly in the road, first radically and then more frequently. It's very unnatural looking. It looks like they were placed there on purpose. Now my car's a four wheel drive but I'm getting a little worried because the rocks are getting large and combine this with how tight the road is and now driving around them is becoming sketchy. I'm now driving very slow to not pop a tire or make a wrong move and get stuck on the bank or something. The road suddenly takes a very sharp left hand and downward turn. I creep along this turn but as soon as I see the road continuing this weird trajectory, I have a feeling that something's bad. My gut starts talking to me and telling me turn around but at this point, I realise I can't now. The car is not wide enough to do a three point turn. I could chance it but I didn't want to get my front end caught on something pushed over the bank or my back end going off the back into the other direction. I say to myself just keep pushing forward and you are bound to get enough room to turn around shortly. As I make my way driving this weird downward road with sharp curves and oddly placed rocks, I start to see items off to the side of the road. At first, it's just garbage, I mean bottles, boxes, wraps, etc. Then I start to see toys, like kids toys and lots of them, an uncomfortable amount. I then start seeing clothes, some old and weathered and tattered like they've been there for years but some are fairly new. The amount of clothes I'm seeing also increases. Then I start seeing mattresses, not at random but lots of them all over the place with dirty stains on them. My gut really begins screaming at me to get out of there but I still don't have the room to turn around. While I'm sitting there trying to figure out what my next move is, I get the distinct feeling that I'm being watched. The moment that feeling hits me I audibly yell at myself no. Then I slam the car in reverse and drive reverse dodging all the random rocks and all the way back up and out the sharp turns until the path levels out again. I go into full I need to get out of here mode and quickly slam the car into reverse doing a three point turn. My back end goes slightly off the bank as I slam back into drive and pound the gas to throw myself back onto the road and out of whatever dark woods I've discovered. I have no clue what I come across that day. Best case scenario was probably some weird people deep in the woods with some dodgy den, but I don't know. I'm just glad I trusted my gut and actually escaped from the situation. The first story is when I met my wife 10 years ago. We're 17 and I was a hunting nut, deciding to go camping in the sand dunes behind my suburb, just off the beach. We live in Brest, rural Australia, so nothing really happens. Anyway, pretty local area, lots of people around. We decide to just hang around the beach, go walking and settle down for the night. A couple of hours passed and we had a small campfire going. We then jump into our sleeping bag and go to sleep. I'm then awoken to fudding all around us and a grok 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 noise. Okay, I freaked us out, especially because I was half asleep. Turned out it was an emo that stood on us and honestly, the big fella was so shocked and took off. We think it's really odd but decide to sleep again.
But then we realise there's people everywhere. They walk past us, and we didn't see them though. They're not actually talking, we can just hear them walking. They eventually break into a run and start laughing. We heard them run over the dunes to the seaside, and then chanting. People weren't off their head, or doing anything like they're loving it. It's almost like somebody was getting chased, and the people chasing them were really enjoying it. It's really hard to describe. There was a group of people running up and down the trail around us that wouldn't stop chanting at this point. I called my partner's parents and they came with their Rockweiler and guns to pick us up. We walk back to the parking lot and eventually go back to the main trail. We can still hear people running out of the darkness behind us laughing and screaming, some of them taunting us to come back over the dunes. We never figured out what it was, but it wasn't the local Aboriginal people, and if it wasn't the local meth heads, we don't know who it was, but it was at least 50 people at around 3am. Now for my second story. We were homeless for a while at around 20. We rescued Mastiffs and I had an opportunity to train in the Melbourne and represent a gym for MMA. We drove across Anulabor with our three dogs and my wife's mother. Halfway across, we got tired and saw some dilapidated road stop. It was just some younger woman's house and a shop attached. We pulled up and talked to the female owner and an older bloke. They looked at us and asked if we were tired. I said yeah, and they asked us if we wanted to drive back, and we say sure. We stopped for a rest because the folks seemed nice. We drove around back to a car park equivalent of car bodies. Okay, that's odd already because you know, the nearest town is like a day's drive. Anyway, one of our dogs is unwell and needed a strict diet to go to the bathroom regularly. I get her out of the car and the other dogs jump out too. The Rockweiler takes off to explore. The dog goes out and I call her back. No response. That's pretty normal, she's ignorant sometimes. I get out to look for her and she's sniffing in a sleeping bag. Alright, fine. But, this place is absolutely wrecked. I don't give it a second thought. I then look up and see a massive tarp wrapped up around something, which is strung up through some trees, completely suspended. And behind it a few sleeping bags suspended again, about ten in all. Then I noticed the absolute swarm of flies. I got the dogs back into the car, saw the woman and the bloke on the way out, wave at them and act normal. Nothing, no wave or smile. All the former charm is gone. We didn't ever report it because we honestly had no idea where it was. We just kept heading east to the biggest road we can find. And eventually we make it out of there. Now I'd like to give you some information before my story starts. I was a park ranger and I'd only been doing the job for a couple of months and I had one experience that still stays with me now, even years after doing the service. Now I would often operate alone. This is something I didn't really have an issue with because sometimes I like the serenity of everything. Especially during winter months I found the forest really beautiful out on my own. But, hey, each their own, I guess. Some of my friends think it's weird and I can understand that, really. Now, one particular day we had a call out for a missing person. Apparently there was somebody going through the forest wearing all white, and whenever somebody tried calling out for them they would run off. Now, worried somebody had fell and hit their head, I was convinced that it was just a young hiker had got lost, so I'm happy to go and investigate and oblige. Now at the time I set out, the sun's still shining and everywhere's beautiful and life's pretty good. I was confident that I was going to find this person, especially because at this point it was early on in my career, I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to find them and maybe get some credit for doing it, so I set out. Now as I set out, I realised that it's actually colder than I realised, so I quickly head in to grab a jumper, and I'm not joking, the second I got back out from my tower, 
I can see somebody running off, just vaguely in the distance wearing white. I presume it's my mind playing tricks on me, but I remember the description so call out. I end up chasing after this person and they're just about running off ahead of me. It's very really difficult to make out much else because they're moving so quick, but my god, could this person run? They run like an Olympic athlete, and honestly I struggled for a long long time to actually catch up with them. To be honest it actually really annoyed me after a while because I'm not gonna lie I was getting out of breath, but I decided I should continue onward anyway. Now they were leading me deeper and deeper and into the forest, but at the time I wasn't too worried about this because it's somewhere that I knew relatively well, but I knew at some point I was going to get out of an area where I knew, and I'd probably be in the middle of nowhere, but hey, I have to keep going, it's a part of the job. I radio in what's happening, they say, yeah, fine, just keep going. They want me to capture this person. Now at this point it starts to get relatively dark because of the time of day, and we're basically walking. Well, I wouldn't say it's exactly a walk, it's relatively quick, but not too quick. Now, I don't understand how this person can see where they're going because I can't see anything right now. I stop for a second to catch my breath and I do see a strange orb of light moving across in front of me to my right that I've not really seen anything like since. I presume it's maybe a firefly or something and continue on. I keep calling out but this person does not stop. We end up making it into an area of the forest I'm completely unfamiliar with, but I was so focused on tracking this person down that it does not bother me, and I keep going. Now I look to my left and I swear to myself, the rocks are extremely jagged and I merely walk straight into this pit thing. I just hate the fall to the spiders and bugs that could be down there. I end up walking over some rocks that leads to a slight hill. I decide that I must find this person and I'm kind of blind to the danger that I'm in. I've just ran out into pretty much the middle of nowhere trying to find someone and it's getting dark. I don't really have much backup because I don't know where I am. I mean heck, maybe I'll end up on the missing persons list if I'm not careful. But I must press on and that's exactly what I do. I continue going deeper into the forest and I have no sign of this person now. One strange thing I've realised is when I turn a corner, looking in a general direction that I think they've went, the trees suddenly have more life to them. It's almost like the trees are much greener here, and it's silent. It's something that I think is rather bizarre because you'd presume there'd be more insects and whatnot on the trees, but I can't really hear anything. But to be entirely honest, it's probably from my fear more than anything that this has happened. I continue on and I see a large building in the distance. I think this is odd because there shouldn't be anything out of here. This thing has been here for a while and I have to find out what it is. I continue going through the clearing and there it is. It's a pretty nice building, it appears to be an old Nordic style church almost which is completely black. I think that's odd and breaking up the darkness is that white figure at the top. I call out again, and it just pops down out of view. This time I'm a little hesitant, but I must figure out what this is, and I must go and help. So I rush in there. At first I try and go through the main entrance, but there's no way in. Then I realise that if I head just under to the side, I can kind of creep my way round. I ended up crawling under some kind of underpass thing. Not exactly a cellar, but... It leads me to where I need to go. I ended up making it through a clearing and I turn on my torch again and my god it's beautiful. It's what appears to be an old abandoned church literally in the middle of nowhere. I've never seen anything like it. I'd have to say it's at least 200 years old if I guessed and it's all entirely made out of wood. There's no stone or anything here and as I flick on my light I can hear an echo sound all around me. I can see that thing again just off ahead and suddenly it hits me. Something's deeply wrong. None of this makes sense. I shouldn't have been chasing whatever this is out of here because God knows what's actually in here. 
Am I alone, or is it just this person? Why have they not responded to me? I say, God, you're so stupid under my breath. And I hear a shush sound behind me. Terrified, I dart round quickly and... I can't see anyone. I say, who's there, with my voice shaking. And now there's a whisper in my ear saying, You shouldn't have come here. And I can hear some laughter. It's not a loud laughing, almost like a child who's done something wrong, but there must be at least 10 or 12 of them all laughing simultaneously. I drop the torch and quickly stumble back to where I've come from. I make it into the clearing again and quickly go through the small tunnel. What's worse is I can feel an insect or animal drop onto my head. I brush it off to the side and quickly realize it's a big cobweb. God, I hate spiders so much. I'm not sure what I can hear behind me, whether it's a giant spider or them, but something's following me. I eventually make it out again and I don't bother looking behind me. I sprint and eventually I make it back to an area of the forest that I actually know. Now I'm so scared by this point that I don't bother to radio in anything. I continue on the path that I know, not even bothering looking behind me and I make it back in record time. I eventually get back to the station. I frantically radio in what's happened and you know the worst part? No one believed me. Not a soul or person. They say, if you can't find it then just tell us. Don't make up some rubbish like this. And then I'm met by silence. I can't believe what's just happened. I tell them again and they don't even reply this time. I'm so frustrated because I don't know what happened. I don't bother making a police report because I know I'm probably going to lose my job, but all I know is there's some psychopaths out there who are in some kind of old church building trying to lure in people like me, but the fact that they lured someone in there in full uniform shows that they're completely different to anyone else I've dealt with. The only other thing it could be is something paranormal, but I don't believe that. I ended up quitting working in that area literally the following day. Well, I should say it was a sleepless night and it felt like the whole day had merged into one, but God, I really have never felt fear like it, and I actually get shudders even thinking of it now. I just wish there was more people to see it there with me. Now, I'm not much of a hunter, but when I was a teenager, I was always friends with stoners in high school, even though I wasn't one myself and we'd always find the weirdest things to do. We lived in rural Mississippi, which I promise is not as horribly redneck as it seems, but we always heard the stories of the backward Satan church cult. You know, that whole legend that I guess you really hear a lot of when you're younger. So regardless, we actually got a lead once from one of our friends who used to go and smoke and fornicate at this particular spot in the middle of nowhere. They said they come across some weird animal skins and saw some people in weird garb walking around. So of course, we're going to check it out. Our friends wouldn't go with us so it was me and two girls and three guys. We drove out to the nearest trail and parked way out in the woods. Me and one of the other guys along with one of the ladies were a little chicken, worried about finding something cool for, and we decided that we're going to hike with our friends. After a good 10 minutes of walking blind through the woods, we can actually hear moans and screams. We've come across dead animals. It looked like some sicko hunters were just being disgusting with the animals and actually throwing their heads and whatnot around. They were mostly deer, but we found dogs even. This was more than enough for one of us to actually go back into the car. Of course, we ended up sitting in the car smoking cigarettes and just messing around until one of our friends returned. When they did come back, they were exhausted and had been running. Now, this was also before cell phones were capable of documenting everything and none of us cared to bring one because we didn't have a decent camera on our one. All we got was a piece of cloth that my friend ripped off something. Anyways, when they get back to the car, they sped away and they drove us to our usual hangout spot and tell us what happened. They had walked for a good while and found this makeshift church with more dead animals everywhere. 
Apparently there was all kinds of symbols around and whatnot on it. They also heard awful noises, but my friend grabbed some scraps from one of the burnt areas of the building. It was one of the black jackets that our friend told us about stuck to the ground, like somebody had been pinned there before. The whole thing was weird and I didn't see it for myself, but I did see the animals, whether it be the sickos or hunters, but there really was a satanic church or something. The forest creeps me out to this day. Among other good stories, I have this one, but it really freaks me out. The first story is when I met my wife 10 years ago. We're 17, and I was a hunting nut, deciding to go camping in the sand dunes behind my suburb, just off the beach. We live in Brest, rural Australia, so nothing really happens. Anyway, pretty local area, lots of people around. We decide to just hang around the beach, go walking and settle down for the night. A couple of hours passed and we had a small campfire going. We then jump into our sleeping bag and go to sleep. I'm then awoken to fudding all around us and a crock 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 noise. Okay, I freaked us out, especially because I was half asleep. Turned out it was an emo that stood on us and honestly, the big fella was so shocked and took off. We think it's really odd but decide to sleep again. But then we realise there's people everywhere. They walk past us and we didn't see them though. They're not actually talking, we can just hear them walking. They eventually break into a run and start laughing. We heard them run over the dunes to the seaside and then chanting. People weren't off their head or doing anything like they're loving it. It's almost like somebody was getting chased and the people chasing them were really enjoying it. It's really hard to describe. There was a group of people running up and down the trail around us that wouldn't stop chanting at this point. I called my partner's parents and they came with their rockweiler and guns to pick us up. We walk back to the parking lot and eventually go back to the main trail. We can still hear people running out of the darkness behind us laughing and screaming, some of them taunting us to come back over the dunes. We never figured out what it was, but it wasn't the local aboriginal people, and if it wasn't the local meth heads, we don't know who it was, but it was at least 50 people at around 3am. Now for my second story. We were homeless for a while at around 20. We rescued Mastiffs and I had an opportunity to train in the Melbourne and represent a gym for MMA. We drove across the Nullarbor with our three dogs and my wife's mother. Halfway across we got tired and saw some dilapidated road stop. It was just some younger woman's house and a shop attached. We pulled up and talked to the female owner and an older bloke. They looked at us and asked if we were tired. I said yeah, and they ask us if we wanted to drive back, and we say sure. We stopped for a rest because the folks seemed nice. We drove around back to a car park equivalent of car bodies. Okay, that's odd already because you know, the nearest town is like a day's drive. Anyway, one of our dogs is unwell and needed a strict diet to go to the bathroom regularly. I get her out of the car and the other dogs jump out too. The rockweiler takes off to explore. The dog goes out and I call her back. No response. That's pretty normal, she's ignorant sometimes. I get out to look for her and she's sniffing in a sleeping bag. Alright, fine. But... This place is absolutely wrecked. I don't give it a second thought. I then looked up and see a massive tarp wrapped up around something, which is strung up through some trees completely suspended, and behind it a few sleeping bags suspended again, about ten in all. Then I noticed the absolute swarm of flies. I got the dogs back into the car, saw the woman and the bloke on the way out, wave at them and act normal. Nothing. 